All right, good afternoon. Today is Monday, April 24th, 2023. It is noon. It's a meeting of the Accursion Board of Selectmen. Uh, we appreciate you all being here this afternoon. Um, not the best time to do a meeting, but we're primarily just reviewing the warrants, um, the articles for town meeting, and then want to ultimately take advantage of the time to do some other routine business. But the real, the real headliner in the show is uh, we're going to recognize somebody who is invested a lot of time and energy and dedication to our town and I think that's really worth uh, being here at noon. Um, so with that, is there a motion to call the meeting to order? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Motion carries. Please rise to the pledge of allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, so uh, first two items we have in the meeting mail is to, is a letter from Richard Mercier. We'd like to be appointed to the Historical Commission. Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Carries. Next is a letter from Eric James, interested in being appointed to the uh, Beautification Committee. Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. As I mentioned uh, earlier, the real show is uh, Dina. Uh, if you would come up to the podium, please. Dina St. Pierre, who is uh, our outgoing librarian. Um, we say that with a real heavy heart, but really excited for you in this new opportunity. Um, and uh, but as as we like to do with folks who've made a, a huge impact on our community, bring you in and invite you in uh, to our home and, and recognize the work that you have done um, publicly. And I know your trustees are here, and if anybody from the library would like to um, say something, um, please do. Um, so we have a citation from the Board of Selectmen. As it be it known that the Accretion Board of Selectmen hereby extends its thankfulness to Dina St. Pierre, Director of the Accretion Public Library. The Board of Selectmen would like to recognize your eight years of service and dedication to the library the town and its patrons, as well as the patrons of all surrounding cities and towns. Thank you for your tireless work in promoting the library as a place that has something for everyone, not only this town, but in many neighboring ones as well. And I think that's really important, right, is that people have to understand the role of the library. It's not just about the town that it's located in. Um, it's, a, it's a community space um, for residents of all over. And I know there's been people who have come into uh, the town of a Christian library because it's uh, it is a second home for many. It's the um, uh, the atmosphere that you and the team have created over there and the library trustees. And I think it's just really gratifying to see as you know we were talking about what to do with the li with the Russell Memorial Library, and it was just this general feeling that libraries were the, a thing of the past and your work and the work of Mrs. Francis in the community center um, I think that's just a great story is that the Maria Howard School was a community center and then the library and putting that energy together is why you have uh, the place that you do today and then you know just how it was built it was done with students from Old Colony who then became full-time employees uh, we use community preservation money, uh, cl green communities money, and, and it's just like, you know, that's the poster for how municipal projects should be done um, when people want to work together, what can be accomplished, and we're just really fortunate you, that you've been the captain of that ship uh, for all these years. And so, um, gentlemen, I know you guys have a lot to say and to offer. I don't want to hog, uh, hog the, be a ball hog here. So, um, Floor is yours. I think you said it best, Mr. Chairman. You know, I, I, I made a comment at the last meeting when we found out you were leaving, Dina, and um, you know, I'm, I'm extremely sad to see you go. I think there's, um, you know, hundreds if not thousands of people in the community sad to see you go. Um, I know it's not something that I'm happy about. Um, we have exceptional employees. Um, you're one of them. Thank you. Um, and it's. It, you know, I don't say enough sometimes about our employees, but 
you know, it's extremely sad to see somebody of your magnitude leave the town of Akushnet, and you know, there's, there's some big shoes to be filled. Um, but I wish 11. You, I wish <laughs> <laughs> uh, is that what your pro kids are? Uh, um, it's 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 going to be a tough ride for anybody else to take your place, sweetheart. And I I really do wish you the best of luck in your future. Thank um, you. And maybe there'll be a point in time where we'll have you back. We'll never see. say never, right? Correct. <laughs> so, but thank you for everything you've thank done you. for the community. Thank you. Dean, I think I've repeatedly told you over and over again how much I appreciate everything you do. Um, to just double up on these gentlemen's comments, like I've said to you many of times, I will miss you, and I think you've done incredible things for this town, and regardless of what happens in the future, this door is always open. Thank you. That really means a lot to Jen? me. Thank you. Okay, I just, yeah, I'll just move over um, here, I guess. <laughs> this is the I, part where I won't make eye contact. Yeah, please, please don't. We'll just kind of go like this. Um, I just wanted to say on behalf of the Board of Trustees and the Town of Akushnet, we thank you for everything that you've done. And um, it will. it is a great big loss for our community. Um, but we will wish you the best of luck thank going you. forward. And uh, I think we've said everything we need to say at our own meetings, but I didn't <laughs> want to let that go once. But thank you. So thank you. Thanks, Jen. Thank, thank you. you. And yeah, when I walked in and saw them all here, I was like, whoa. <laughs> and then Sandra, my uh, Sandra Medeiros, who's been an employee of the town for a lot longer than most of us, 17 years, um, it's my right hand. <laughs> Um, that's very hard to walk away from. So I know she's not here because of me, but she's here for something else oh, very important. <laughs> but also, <laughs> um, this is, yeah. Um, I will just say, I, I, I wasn't gonna say anything at all other than, other than thank you, but I have to go off something you said, uh, Chairman Wolner. Um, the day of my first interview, which was held at Town Hall, I think because they didn't want me to see all of Russell, until I was a little more committed. <laughs> so we met on the second floor here. And um, when the interview was done, um, Connie Preston, who was a, a longtime employee of the library and was a founding member of the Friends of the Library, she took me in her van over to Middle Road to give me a tour of the new library under construction. And um, the old colony students you mentioned were in there working. They were tiling the bathrooms. They, it's, it was so cool to see that as a youth services librarian to see young people in there building what was to become the, the new library for the town. And um, I got to meet a few other people who worked for the town at the time who were in there that day. And um, over an hour later, uh, Connie drove me back to town hall. Um, and when I got to, into my car, I was like, wow, if these people hire me, like this is who I'm gonna have to work for. Connie Preston, who gave so much for a new library and her husband Henry, uh, Kristen Liotti, who was chair of the board at the time, and who's now president of the Friends Group, John Tavares, who was president of the Friends at the time, uh, Jean Strapinis, Nancy Francis, and all of the community center people. It was like, I'm gonna have to just go in there. These people gave 100% of their time voluntarily for a new library, and I'm gonna have to go in there and work for those people and give 100% of myself. And I can leave knowing that I've given 100% of myself um, to the town. Um, I'm very proud of what we've all accomplished. It's not one person who's done all this. It's very much a town effort, like you said. Um, and we've made great things happen um, over there. We had 172 people on Friday afternoon for a concert on the back lawn. That doesn't happen. If you go on Facebook pages of other area libraries, that kind of thing isn't happening and it's because like you said we've, we've made that a welcoming inclusive place for the residents of this town and the surrounding community so when i say it's so hard to leave it's extremely hard to leave the residents of this town and the greater library community for sure <laughs> this is hard to walk away from because we've made really good things happen there but there's a very strong foundation and i know those good things are just going to continue there's so much positivity regarding that space and things that we do there and that's just going to continue and I look so forward to attending the uh, summer concert series and not as an employee um, but just as somebody who can bring their lawn chair and sit, sit and enjoy that beautiful space and all those good things that happen there so um, 
I'm I'm honored that I've been here and and um, I, I know it I made it yeah that's it, <laughs> Congratulations. That's it. but thank you so much thank, thank you. you I if appreciate you it Memorialize this. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank Thank you. Yeah, we're doing the, the photo. I would have worn socks. <laughs> <laughs> I, I should have worn my Converse. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, that's so nice. Thank you so much. Great. Great. Thank you. Thank you all very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> all right, gentlemen. Um, if it's all right with you, I'm going to take one person out of order. Sandy Medeiros, who's also a library employee, and I think she's on her lunch break. Um, a real passionate advocate for um, safe bicycling and pedestrian safety and road safety and we had a conversation she and her group sent us a letter back in January about a new state law and then we got to chatting about it and since then there's been some interest from some residents as well um, so I thought we'd bring in the, the, the expert who knows all about this and you know if the board sees fit to uh, you know, put out a call for those who'd like to serve on a committee of bike safety, pedestrian safety. So anyway, the floor is yours, Sandy. Thank you. Thank you. That's a hard act to follow. Dina will certainly be missed. Um, she really did a super job at the library, and um, we wish her well. So I, I prepared something. It's probably easier if I just read it. Sure. <laughs> um, I'm a little shaky. Um, so as David said, my name is Sandra Paris. I'm the president of the South Coast Bikeway Alliance. The South Coast Bikeway Alliance is a nonprofit organization that is advocating for the completion of the South Coast Bikeway. What's the South Coast Bikeway, you might ask? Well, if you've ridden or walked or ran on any of the pathways in Mount Apoisic, New Haven, or New Bedford, then you know the South Coast Bikeway. So the South Coast Bikeway, when it's complete, will be a 50-mile pathway consisting of primarily off-road, separate and divided pathways um, from the Rhode Island border to Cape Cod. As you may be aware, on December 22nd, 2022, there was a fatal uh, crash involving a bicyclist and a truck on Main Street in the Cushion near the Council on Aging. I'm here today to ask that you prioritize public safety and commit to making improvements to Cushion's roadways to protect all users. Where do you start? I suggest that you form a bike, ped, or pathways committee in town. Pathways committees in Fall River, for Haven, and Mattapoisett have supported the design, funding, and completion of bikeways in their communities with the help of SERPED, the Southeastern Regional Planning and Economic Development District. SERPED actually is currently developing their next work program, which starts this October. Um, and there's still time to include a cushion it. And what we ask of you is that if, if you could reach out to SERPED uh, with a letter of request from the select board, or a town official can fill out their community tech request form. And SERPED could provide services to you um, in this manner uh, to, to increase your, uh, your pathways. Um, please contact Jackie Jones, the principal trans planner at SERPED who has reached out numerous times without any response from this town. Um, what would the Pathways Committee do? An Accushionate Pathways Committee could explore the options available in Accushionate with the guidance of SERPED as our member communities do. There are many resources available for funding and guidance including Mass DOT Complete Streets which I believe you um, are a member of, Mass Safe Routes to School, Again, the schools uh, are partnering with them. The Mass Trails Grant Program and additional state and federal funding. Uh, local Community Preserva Preservation Act funds, CPA, CPC funds, um, have enabled Westport, Dartmouth, and New Bedford to hire SERPED to perform a feasibility study to determine how to connect New Bedford and Fall River uh, with pathways. Um, and in addition, we've also applied, SERPED applied on our behalf for a $40,000 um, 
Mass Trails grant, which we were, we were awarded, and it continues to study through phase two. Um, what changes are possible in a cushionet? A cushionet's main street and middle roads offer an opportunity to add a network of bicycle and pedestrian pathways connecting the school and the library to the town center, recreation sites, and the senior center and beyond. Many residents of all ages currently walk and bike in the road, with cars exceeding 30 miles per hour. Residents should have an option to safely bike or walk to their destination, which has the added benefit of reducing traffic congestion and offering a healthy alternative transportation. The addition of pathways throughout a cushionet could eventually link with the South Coast Bikeway in New Bedford. A safe, designated route to the new South Coast Rail North Church Street Station, a mouthful, uh, could be a nice benefit for cushionet residents to commute by bicycle <coughs> to the rail station. Why should the cushionet create pathways? Bicycle infrastructure, especially car-free bicycle infrastructure, has been shown time and time again to positively impact the health, economy, and quality of life in the regions where they occur. Many reports have documented hundreds of millions of dollars of economic impact directly attributed to bike path construction. Our coastal region will see similar benefits. We ask that you consider these improvements and we offer our support in implementation. So what is the state doing for us? Um, currently, thankfully, after 10 years of Bill House Number 5103 to protect vulnerable road users was signed into law and went into effect this April. This law affects everyone, really, who uses our, our roads, and, is, and here is a brief summary. So the, the first is five points of the law. I believe um, you've received a copy. I asked Tanya to um, print a copy for you. So the first, um, the first uh, element is drivers need to provide a safe passing distance of four feet or more when passing vulnerable road users. I wish they chose a different word. That's a tough one. <laughs> um, so these bumper stickers are available through Mass Bike thinking I should just put one on my back when I ride my bicycle. Um, but you can put them on your bicycle um, and I can get you more. Um, what is a vul vulnerable road user? So a vulnerable road user is a, are people who are walking, biking, roadside workers, people in wheelchairs, people on horses, people on farm equipment, anyone other than in a, in a, a vehicle, a traditional vehicle. The law requires that safe passing signage be put in place. So that means they've created uh, signage, Mass DOT has signage that says <coughs> the new law is give four feet to pass. So we ask that you, the town of Akushinet, reach out to Mass DOT District 5 and request the four foot passing signage which can be installed on Akushinet roads. And, and that is a requirement of the law that the towns do uh, install them. The second element of the law is rear red lights for bicycles. Um, from now on, cyclists are now required to use front white and rear red lights when cycling at night. Uh, you can't be stopped for not having a light on your bicycle. Um, <coughs> bicycle shops, anyone selling a bicycle will be encouraged to sell the light or provide the light at the time of sale. And the South Coast Bikeway Alliance for the past five years or so has been actively participating in the Mass Bike Lights Brigade and we uh, purchase through grant opportunities, um, uh, we purchase bike light sets and we give them out to the community, to commuters riding by bicycle, those that are in need. Uh, the third element is safer speed limits. So this law clarifies the process for speed limit reduction from 30 to 25 miles per hour in thickly settled areas. It's giving you a, an easier way to go about doing that. So if you wanted to change the speed limits uh, in, in your town, um, there is a new process to do that. So maybe in the Main Street, City Center, Town Center here, um, it would be um, advisable to do that. Crash reporting is the fourth element. A standardized crash report will be used by police departments to improve statewide data collection, which in turn will be used to support changes that increase roadway safety. 
And lastly, truck safety devices. Large 10,000 pound municipal state trucks will be equipped with safety guards, mirrors, and cameras to help reduce tragic right hook fatalities. So to learn more, we are actually um, participating and helping to arrange for a vulnerable, vulnerable road user webinar this Monday, May 30th. And this live webinar about um, the new legislation is being planned for the morning of May 30th. Representatives from Mass Bike and Mass DOT will discuss questions about legislation addressing speed limits, e-bikes, and road user requirements. It is all aimed at safer roads. The primary audience is town administrators, bike pet committees, and public safety officials. And an email will be circulated to give you more details. And we ask that you try to attend. And in closing, I'd like to tell you that uh, May is National Bike Month, but also Bay State Bike Month. And we do have a couple of events coming up. The South Coast Bikeway Alliance is happy to resume their annual uh, bike summit. So on Tuesday, May 9th, we're holding our 10th annual bike summit at the James Arnold Mansion, which is the former Wong Sutta Club in New Bedford from 6 to 8 p.m. We'll have several guest speakers, uh, including Pete Sutton on the Transportation Department uh, of Mass DOT. Uh, we'll have CERFED Transportation Planners, uh, City of New Bedford Planner, and um, CERFED. Uh, and we hope you can attend that as well. And finally, the most delicious, tasty uh, rides in the area is the Matapoise at Tour de Creme, and that is going to be held on Sunday, May 21st. Um, there are three routes. The longest route does travel through Kushnet, which I'm sure you're aware. Uh, uh, each rider, regardless of which route you're on, um, will get ice cream at, at least one, probably three creameries. Uh, it's all a benefit for the Mattapoisett Land Trust and the Friends of the Mattapoisett Rail Trail. A perfect example of how a nonprofit organization can help um, their town create pathways. Great. I'd be happy to take any questions. Th Sandy, thank you for uh, for coming in. Um, you know, recreational opportunities is something you know that I'm passionate about. I know my colleagues are as well. We've got the Riverview Park down by Slocum Street. Um, you know, we tried to connect. That those you know Slocum Street and Main Street and the river for a little bit of a loop. We've got some work going on at Lake Street, but there's so many other trail opportunities in town, and we've talked about you know how we can link them all up with proper signage and, and you know some marketing so people know of all the great um, opportunities that we have. But to to I'd ask the board to consider one authorizing the directing the town administrator to contact Serped. Um, on our behalf to take advantage of those resources, but if the board wants to create or advertise to create a, a bike ped committee, um, like you suggested, uh, those could be two good first steps that we could take. Yes, yeah, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, also, this year, I only know because of my bus. You would just say uh, identify us. My name is Thomas DeVaris. <laughs> I live right here at 21 and Wayne Wayne Christian. Yep. Yeah. I also I drive a Tremblay bus, so I also know that for this year, just starting this year, that. New bike laws have come into play mm -hmm. that bikes that go 30 miles an hour or more can use a whole lane. They're not entitled to just be on the side of the road. They can be in the middle of the road or whatever. So I do, I encourage that you follow up on what she's saying to you because right. there's a lot of new things that come out every year yeah. about a bicycle. Hi, um, I'm here to support Sandy. I live in town. And What's your I'm name, Def man? Laurie Bates. Okay. I yeah, am a Laurie. cyclist, and I would love to be on the committee if one does get formed. Okay. I am on the Historic Commission and the Historical Society already. But anyway, um, I lived in Newport for 12 years, and I worked with Bike Newport, who did a lot of this kind of thing from the start. So I have, I mean, I have some background kind of experience of as, how things work. So. Sounds like a great chairman to me. Okay. Chairperson to me. I'm perfectly fine. I think anytime safety is involved, I'm on board. Um, and I probably should get on a bicycle more often myself. So uh, I'd be more than happy to make the motion to have town administrator reach out to Serpent 
for some more info and also make the motion to put together a committee. Right, so a motion on the floor. Second. Contact Serpent. There's a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Carries. There's a motion on the floor and a second to uh, advertise and create a bike and uh, safety bike ped committee. Um, so all those in favor? Aye. Motion Aye. carries. Thank you, Sandy, for that. That's uh, it's huge to have somebody like yourself come in and provide us with some direction. Um, it'd be great to get volunteers out there um, and we can take those nominations. I don't know, typically a committee, you know, five or seven, but in this instance, I think the more the merrier, right? I mean, the more people involved and so you can divide up duties and you know, no one person can do it alone. I just want to say it, it's also pedestrian too, because you've mentioned bicycling, just so yeah. people yeah. know, and I know I do uh, all things a cushion if somebody was talking because I saw uh, Bob Hankley had replied, you're brave enough to go on that web page. And I never so, called Sometimes. It, but, <laughs> <laughs> but that was a good, I said good timing because it's yep. about right out front here in the light. Yep. So. Yep. Which was taken care of this morning by yeah. Selectman Warner. He spoke I, with the DPW first. The same, you. you know, it's pedestrians, yep. not just yeah. bicycles. And, and, you know, word of mouth and education is, is really important. And so. So thank you for that. Sounds like we've got a, a little bit of a roadmap and a great game plan. Yeah. If I could follow yeah, up a couple please. of things. Um, with respect to this gentleman's comment, um, bikes are allowed to take the full lane anywhere for their safety. You don't have to be an electric bike, right. just right. a bicycle. If you don't have a bike facility, you are allowed on the road just like a car. And cars need to yield to them. That doesn't mean three bikes ride abreast. Yeah, you can ride single file. If they can go 30 miles an hour, they can ride three abreast, man. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I had just gone through the class, not last week. Mm -hmm. I well, drive a school bus. I mean, I they tell us everything. You know, what's, what's yeah. really interesting, uh, especially in a, a small town like a Kushnet, where we always talk about, like, what we like about a Kushnet is the small town way of life and the slower pace and things of that nature. And, you know, just a, an encouragement to folks who are on the road, whether it's Middle Road or Main Street, I and mean, if you're stuck behind, stuck behind some cyclists, to say, hey, you know what, that's a good way to just relax a little bit, right? Or if you're behind a tractor on Main Street, it's just a good way to remember to relax, enjoy the scenery. You may get there a minute later or two minutes later, but in the end, it's probably good for your blood pressure, and that's why you, you know, that's why you live in a push right. So. Uh, Again, thank you very much uh, for bringing this to our attention. You're very and, welcome. And uh, we'll get that moving and keep you updated on where we are. Um, I guess we can keep the, you know, the request for members to the committee um, we'll open, know, put up, on, on, open, and we'll put it out on social media and you know get people involved and see what we can come up. With. Yeah, okay. Sir, Sir Fred has um, helped to uh, set up like get committees in towns okay. and cities before so they can right. maybe serve will be the that. first step like get them to tap into that resource and they can help get this thing off the ground so. yes please reach out to jackie she's been uh, open to talk awesome. to you for a while thank you very much thank you have a great day yes work, yeah. sandy <laughs> sandy when, when the committee's formed and and you guys get rolling can you can you kind of look at you know, first things first is trying to get us connected to the FAVE and Mattapoise bike trails because that probably seems like the easiest path, no pun intended, to get people out and enjoying that, right? We, would, we had talked about doing it several years ago, but if you could look at that and figure out a way for a Cushionet residence to be able to have like a drop spot, we could just launch from there and head right out on, into FAVE. And Easier said than done. <coughs> there is there is a plan in the works. And New Bedford has a lot of um, facilities in the works in, in various stages from design to build. Everything from redoing Route 18 north of Elm Street all the way to Cogsall, including uh, a river walk, which I know the town of Akushna has talked about a river walk on the other side. Um, their river walk would go up to um, Rivers End Cafe area, um, and then you you folks could take it from there and head north. So if you could if you could bring your that's what you have a bike path committee for, and the the um, expertise of Serpent, they can tell you which roads, what you have now, what's what's feasible and what's not feasible, and do studies and and move forward. Okay, thank but, you. But certainly a network within your town. Yeah, I, I see people daily, I mean lots of people daily, riding Mill Road by mm -hmm. the library. 
most of them are riding on the right side of the road with traffic. A lot of them are not. All ages, they don't know the rules of the road yet, which is why Safe Routes to School and programs like Mass Lake educational programs in your schools is important because the children that are going out on the roads with the number of vehicles on the roads today is very different from when we were kids. They're faster, the vehicles are bigger, and everyone's in a hurry. And then there's a lot of distraction, as we know, with yes, cell phones and everything. I mean, even the cars themselves, they have it all, you know, electronic out. Mm -hmm. um, so you start with the schools with education, then you, you do a plan for where you want your, your bike facilities in town. But I, I, just looking at the town, I envision a nice loop. You've got Main and Mill. Yeah, sure. North and South. And then if you can make a couple of cross connectors, Hamlin Street, as terrible it is it, as it is, would be wonderful if it had a safe bike facility to connect. Lake Street and then Cogsall um, at uh, South Main over here. Is that what we call it? down here. Slocum? Sorry, you talking about Slocum Street? South Main. Um, this is South Main. The one that goes to the, the traffic light down here. Main Street. Main Street. Oh, that's Main Street. 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 Main Street. Street. Yeah. 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 The other Main Street where the old library was. Yeah. yeah. So if, if you could make a nice within your community. Sure. And, you know, that would get you to where you want to go and then you go on the side streets to get home. But at least the main drag where, where the speed of the cars is greater and the volume is greater that if you had faith, uh, safe facilities. Imagine if you, your kids could ride their bike to school like we used to do, or walk. Or if you wanted, we had a family this week. They told me at the, the desk that they rode to the library. And they were this size, this size, and a parent. And I'm like, on Middle Road, you rode <laughs> with this size? You know, unless they're in a tag along, and they've got blaze orange or something on them, I, I don't know if I would recommend that. But if you had safe facilities, then certainly that family could ride safely to the library. So there's a lot to consider. If it Thank doesn't absolutely. happen overnight, a math voice has been working on it for 30 years. So if you want to see them, keep going. Ride for ice cream on the 21st. I'm going to get to work. <laughs> Thank you. My boss will fire me. Yeah. Never. <laughs> All right. <laughs> David, yes. I'm sorry. Um, I know you mentioned the more the merrier for the community. Yeah. But one of the things that my office has been doing is keeping track of all of the committees that we have when they were initiated, um, how many members, uh, because that's important for a quorum. Okay. So I just ask I, that you I keep understand. that, yeah, that okay, in good. mind. Okay. Maybe we can do committee members, alternates. Whatever. You know, just, I understand. Yeah. So if you've got a committee made of twenty and you only have four people show up, right? Uh, understood. Good, good, good suggestion. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Next item is under public got, work. Yeah, BPW. So we've got a number of folks who are uh, looking to carry over vacation days, um, and you know I kind of do this all the time, and. Yeah, you know, I said we're dealing with this all the time as far as like vacation carryover and you know with the limited staff and so some folks being out because of injury and what have you. Um, personally, I feel like it's a reasonable request, um, but I want to ask what the board has to say. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes. The only thing I, I'd like to question, not question so much, is keep an eye on. This close to the end of fiscal year with a lot of days, um, I'd like to see these, I mean, I, I never want to force anybody to take a vacation, but a, a big large accrual of days like that, um, I'd also bring that up simply because I wouldn't want to see these guys get burnt out for not taking their vacation. So this isn't me saying, you know, take your vacation days because there's too much. It's saying, you know, it's a small staff, I think that you know they should definitely think about utilizing the days they have as well just to make sure that they get the rest they need because they are hard-working guys and I don't want to see them get burnt out doing that. Mm -hmm. yes, it looks like it's a buyout, right? So he's proposing. Yeah, for one, yeah. So, 
Uh, <laughs> just buy out and carry over in this. Yeah, well, carry it over, then you're carrying over, then you're not using it the next year, and you're carrying over. We had this discussion, we're usually pretty lenient with one week, that's what's in most of the contracts. You know, I'm, a, I'm all right up to buying out up to seven days, looks like the majority of them are seven days. So if you want me to make a motion, say buy out up to seven days. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Seven days, and then carry over for Dan and for Kathy. Uh, they want to buy out a Dan, and Kathy, Kathy buy out. They're looking at carry yeah, those awesome, over. Yeah, awesome. But they no, you, you and Kathy. Oh, we, we Kathy, did seven yeah. days for the crew. That's for the crew. Buy yeah. out. Yep. So do you want to? Buy out. You have money in the budget because it talks about Correct. money in the yep. budget, and yep. that yep. some yep. of that yep. time yep. was eliminated. Yep. So you want to buy out. Your time in uh, five days, I think it was five days yeah. for both of you. For you and Kathy, Kathy's going to carry it. I'm not sure what I want to do with mine. Maybe I'll do that because it seems like I'm rolling mine over every year, too. So, Kathy, you're going to carry it? Yeah, I'm going to carry it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Carry out, carry over, or buy out for Dan Minard and Kathy Sylvia. Right. Either or, I'm Sylvia. okay with. Okay, so moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. All right. All right. Thanks, Dan. Um, hey, while we got you here, Dan, um, it's it's on the agenda later on. But um, great work to you and the crew for the work that's going on at Lake Street. It's um, you know it's a the committee met last week, and they're just really impressed with all the stuff that you've done with limited resources, and uh, so thank you very much. Any idea when the guide rails are going up? Um, actually, they just came in. The guy just called today, yeah, actually. So, we, so hopefully within a week we stop putting them up. That'd be great. Yeah. That's really important because there's obviously a lot more activity going on now, and um, so yep. good stuff. Thank you. Perfect. All right, cheers. Right. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. All right. All right, first item. Interim treasure collector, it sounds like. Um, I asked as that be pulled. Okay. Next item is uh, appointment of part time uh, clerk in the treasure collector's office, Lang Wynn. Is that right? Is that okay. Do you want to uh, come on up? Talk about <coughs> your uh, credentials. Good afternoon. Hi. And you pronounced my last name right? That's good. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Lang Wynn, and I just want to say thank you so much for allowing me to be part of the team part of the community um, with my banking and my customer service skills and experience, uh, I believe I would be a great asset to the team. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. Great. Thank you. Is there a motion to appoint Lang Wynn? Uh, so moved. Second. In position of Clark for the Treasurer Collector's Office. Yes. A motion to the second. All those in favor? Aye. Right. Motion carries. Thank Welcome you very board. much. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. For, thanks for joining us. Welcome aboard. Have a good day. Yeah, you, too. you too. All right. Pam, uh, the Approval of the annual town election warrant. Is that right? Yes. <coughs> do we have to vote on every precinct or can we just do it as a package? No, you can do it as a package. That's okay. absolutely fine. And I just would like um, just a minute um, to go over some deadlines that we have coming up okay. with the election. Um, the last day to register to vote um, will be Wednesday, May 3rd at 5 p.m. Uh, the law changed um, as of uh, July 1st. It's no longer 8 p.m. It's now 5 p.m. Okay. throughout the state. Um, the next uh, thing is the uh, last day to apply for the mail-in ballots, which is five days before the election. So that'll be Monday, May 8th at 5 p.m. Um, there How does that process work? So just so the uh, the vote by mail. Um, for the most part, everyone received an application with their annual census this year. Um, some towns have opted not to do that. Uh, where we're not doing in person voting, I opted to send it out to every household. When we get the application back from the residents, um, we view the signatures. Um, where we don't check every single signature um, because it would not be conducive. 
but we um, will then, at the request, we enter it into our VRIS voting system. We'll send out the ballot uh, when they come in, and uh, we have not received them. I am expecting them at the end of this week. Okay. Um, all of the pre-work is already done, so when those ballots come in, they'll be mailed out immediately. Uh, once we receive the ballots back, that's when we do the verification of all of the signatures. Uh, because pretty much anyone within a household can request a ballot, um, again, for someone within that household. But it's most important to us to make sure that the person that has actually voted the ballot is the one that has signed the, the outer envelope. So once that ballot comes in, we do not open those until a date um, closer to the election. Um, and those are all opened in the public. Um, there are notices, so anyone that wants to see the process of how we actually do the processing of the ballots, um, they can come and see that. Um, another option that we they, have... They're not fed in the machine that day, though, right? No, they're fed in the machine the day of the election. So um, tip, what I have done in the past, and it does depend on the number of ballots that we receive, um, what we've done is we've taken all of the envelopes and brought them to the polls with a checklist, and we have a team of individuals that will open the envelopes and then process them and put them into the machine. Um, at this point, that's the way I would like to continue to do it, but if it's overwhelming um, and we're just not going to have the time in the day to process all of the ballots, then we would have to do it at a predetermined time, um, which again would be would be um, put up for anyone to watch the process. And presumably, whoever votes early, their name is taken off the voter list or crossed off, so on election day, somebody couldn't go in and do it twice, right? Right, what happens, very good question. Uh, what happens is when that ballot comes into us, we go into the computer system and check it off as, as it's been received. So it will print out on a report, but it will also print on the voter list that that person has already voted. So if you have voted your ballot, let's say a week before the election, and you decide you want to change your vote, with um, early voting, once you vote, you vote. Um, you are not able to say, I don't want it to count. Um, so yes. Good. Mr. Chairman, I, I tested that last year. I did mail-in voting, and I went to vote and portrayed that I hadn't voted, and whoever was there said, uh-uh, you already voted. And I said, just testing the system. So it worked. Sure was. Yeah. <laughs> we have a lot of checks and balances. I drive <coughs> the election staff crazy with my checks and balances. <laughs> so. Right. All right. Thank oh, you. What was, what was the comment about? They changed from 8 p.m. to 5 p.m. The first comment you made. The register to vote deadline. Oh, to the register. If you're going to vote, register to vote. Anyone that's new, oh, okay. or you're going to change your address prior to the election, you have to do it before 5 p.m. They used to allow until 8 p.m., um, but they were finding too many registrars were at their office, and people weren't showing up to to register. Okay. And now there are so many opportunities. You can do it at the Council on Aging. You can register at the RMV. You can do it online. There are just so many other options sure. available. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. All right. And uh, I think it's important to note, election day is the 13th of May, which is a Saturday from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., right? I think Correct. the past has been like 10 a.m. Okay, so yeah. 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. But gentlemen, okay. I'm going to recuse myself from this vote because I am on the ballot this year, so I don't want to be Can part of that discussion. Yes. See, I send in an early ballot, but I, you know, you know, send it in very late. Yeah. And I go down and I to vote, and it isn't marked off. Can I vote and the mail-in ballot not count or? If we if it is shows that you did we did not receive your ballot, yes. then yes, you can vote. And the mail-in ballot <coughs> did not 
would not. Right? Yeah. That's, a that's lot. Just a I'm sure there's a lot of people probably in the same boat, which is what I would do. You know, normally, yeah, put it off. Everybody's so busy. Yeah. Yeah. A you, lot you, of individuals you know. have. That was a, a very good point. A lot of individuals have this feeling that, oh my goodness, if those ballots are floating out there, anyone can use them. And that's not the case um, because you have to check in and check out when you go to the to the polls. And if you've done it beforehand, we already know we already have your signature on file. So again, it's another check and balance. But yes, we don't penalize if you get stuck yeah, in the yeah. mail. Yeah. Um, but yes, you would be would be. Able yeah, to I just vote. I know me. I get busy, and all of a sudden I say, "Oh shoot, this is supposed to be done yesterday." You know, mm -hmm. here I am a week late. Yeah. yeah. You know, so. Right. Thank you. Uh, All right. Mr. Chairman, can I ask yeah. one question of Pam? Sure. Uh, Pam, last year you had made mention that if somebody was planning on doing a write-in campaign, they should reach out to you first. Yes. I uh, got wind of somebody running for the library. trustee of the libraries. Yes. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that that was still something that would help you out. Yes. And not really screw you up. <laughs> yeah, no, not at all. Um, and actually, it was great that the individual did reach out to me because I was able to give her the information for candidates night. Perfect. Because even though someone's not on the ballot, if they're going to be running a, a write-in campaign, they have every opportunity to get up and speak Perfect. as well. Excellent. Okay. Great. And if I could just add in one other deadline um, regarding off topic, the dogs. Um, the dog licensing period is now over and just as a warning, the warnings will be going out at the end of this week. Um, if there's no response to the warnings, um, then the $50 per dog citations will be issued. So I just want to give everyone a heads up on that, okay? And I'm always looking for volunteers. Anyone that's interested in working the polls, helping us to set up, break down, um, I ask that they please contact me in the clerk's office. Great, thank you. Okay, thank you. What is the motion you need for, for this? To accept the warrant. Just that motion made that they accept the um, annual town election of May 13th um, from 8 to 6. Um, for you, want me to, you want me to go through it like we usually do, Pam, and just read the positions? If you can, yeah, if you don't mind, that would, so be, that would be fine. The uh, locations, Precinct 1, Cushion Elementary School, 800 Middle Road, Precinct 2A, Cushion Elementary School, Precinct 2, Cushion Elementary School, Precinct 3, Cushion Elementary School. To cast their votes in the votes in a local election for candidates for the following offices. Moderator, one opening for three years. Town Clerk, one opening for three years. Selectman, one opening for three years. Assessor, one opening for three years. Board of Health, one opening for three years. School Committee, two openings for three years. Commission of Trust Funds, one opening for three years. Commission of Trust Funds, one for the remainder of an unexpired term ending May 17, 2025. Trustee of Free Public Library, two openings for three years. Cemetery Board, one opening for three years. Planning Commissioner, one opening for five years. Planning Commissioner, one for the remainder of the unexpired term ending May 15, 2027. Park Commissioner, one opening for three years. Tree Warden, one opening for three years. Again, it is on Saturday, May 13, 2023, from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. And I am recusing myself from that vote since I am on the ballot. Thank you, David. Thank you. All right. Very good. Thank you, Pam. Thank you, Pam. You're welcome, Mr. Chairman. Just want to make sure everything's above board. I don't what are you running for, David? What's that? What are you running? Tree wood. <laughs> 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 the border. <laughs> the border. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, All right. What do we got here? The school roof ban. Uh, you see in your packet the schedule that Hillcock Security sent to us. Okay. Either the 9th or the 16th, the board will need to award and sign the note. Uh, this is to confirm that you're going out for the short-term loan on the school roof until 
the punch list for the school roof has been completed at that point the town is an option of continuing going out on a ban or to bond it okay so what do we need today do is this, this is informational or uh, this is just informational okay. so for both it's being financed through the solar capital fund the ban uh, can be financed however you want to do it you have to <coughs> decide that once you get into the bond that's when you will definitely have to do it with the solar that's how we discuss paying for the school yeah. roof and the, uh, the ban right now I believe is 62,000 and we're financing it through the budget All right. okay we'll Very discuss good. thank now. you Motion to place on file. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Next item is health insurance. I will deal with that during the discussion on the budget. Okay. Mr. Chairman. All right. Next item uh, deficits, police overtime, and FY23 transfers. You have a memo in your packet from the chief on the police overtime deficit, uh, well, the deficit and the uh, solution. Okay, <laughs> possible solution. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I updated some numbers based on payroll numbers for uh, pay grade that just closed Saturday. Um, we've been working on payroll yesterday and this morning, so. Uh, as of right now, overtime uh, appears to be in a deficit of somewhere around $181,000. The academy line item for salaries um, projected out to maybe be about a fifty-nine hundred dollar deficit in that line item. Line item at the end of the year. Um, that's partially because we were budgeted to send two to the academy. We sent three, and then the timing of the academy was a little sooner than we thought it was going to be. So that's fifty-nine hundred dollars there. Uh, positive news um, on the salaries for permanent positions uh, due to the open positions we've had uh, with vacancies and, and offices on military deployment through uh, pay period um, that closed on Saturday, looks to be about $183,000 um, overage in that line item. Uh, be careful because that, that line item is also used to pay out the year end um, payouts of accumulated time. If people can't take the time off, it normally comes from that line item. Uh, so I'm in the process the next couple, really the next couple weeks of trying to determine what that number is. Um, most of the offices like to try to take the time off, but given our situation, they might not be able to get some of the days off so they might be cashing it out instead. So that's kind of a, the, the, the whole budget, the overtime right now is kind of like a, it's almost like a carnival game, like a moving target on a moving platform with a walk wall. Um, I'm doing my best. Um, at, we have five more pay periods remaining. Um, I'm hopeful that it's not gonna be as, as bad as it seems now. We, we're still waiting on a uh, small amount of money from uh, uh, the state 911, about $6,400 and then the, um, the school uh, resource officers uh, portion of the salary that comes from the school department will be uh, you know, will be in at the end of the year. Um, that'll be somewhere around thirty thousand dollars. So, really, these updates I've been giving to you on a quarterly basis. Um, this is kind of giving us a better idea. Um, some some positive news or some things we've dealt with in the last uh, since since January is for uh, since the beginning of February between February and mid April. We uh, lost two of our four full-time dispatches. Um, we were able to replace them, and they are both, they are all four of them are online and working on their own as of mid-April. Uh, so that should help a little bit with the, with the overtime number there. Um, uh, newly hired officer cleared her field training, uh, was ready to work, is ready to work the road since the first week of uh, April. Fortunately, at that same time, we had another officer go out on a planned um, um, FMLA leave, Family Medical Leave Act. Uh, he is due back to work uh, the second week of um, the second week of May, so that will again that will fill in a full time slot and help alleviate the overtime because there are um, shifts that we are filling that are open that we we're just filling it overtime. And, and the best news, perhaps the best news of, of all, is that our three offices that were overseas um, are back uh, in in country uh, back here. Uh, I've uh, spoken to two of the th well, I've spoken to all three. Um, one of them uh, will be starting his reacclimation period. Uh, it's scheduled to start at the second week of May, uh, which involves in-service and, and doing some other training. So I imagine it would probably be, he would be online hopefully by the first week of June. The second officer would be back getting requisite training out ahead of time. He's gonna come back uh, right around the first of July. And the third officer, though we haven't spoken in detail, 
he looks like he's going to be somewhere out in June as well, which that's not going to help us for FY23, but it's certainly going to put us in a position of strength for FY24. So it's good news that all three of those officers are back, you know, um, and uh, you know, we've kind of got a plan to get them reacclimated. So that's that's basically in a nutshell. And um, my my homework is to uh, you know determine or estimate as best we can going forward the number of days that are going to be cashed in because that's certainly going to go against that that 183 surplus, 183 thousand dollar surplus. Um, you know, I'm going to pull, uh, ask the uh, Kyle, Miss uh, Marrero, Marrero rather, um, you know, for some numbers uh, based on previous buyouts. And you know, I always ask the officers, but the officers always give me a range. It's not that they're trying to mess with me. It's their their intent is to take, for the most part, to take time off. But it's just you, you, you certain dates you can't get off, so they end up by contract they're contractually obligated to be able to catch that time in. So um, that's kind of where we're at. Um, you know, I. You don't want to belabor the point. I know you go on meeting, and I kind of said the, the same thing in, in previous meetings of where we got to where we are right now. So it's going to be really a month-to-month, or -month, really a payroll, the pay, pay period, the pay period, you know, assessment at this point. Great, gentlemen, uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may, uh, Chief. As all this unfolds, it looks like we're on pretty good progress to get everybody back and get you back up to staff. Are you still looking for? new recruits or training or anything like that right now no um to, to your point I, I was i failed to mention the three that we have in the academy uh they are in week 12 which is about the halfway point they are on the range this week as we speak um they're scheduled to graduate <coughs> on july 7th um they will require a 10 to 12 week breaking in period a field training program if you will uh, we have a, a, a formal one there whereas none of them have worked as police officers in the past um, we've we've been lucky over the years where we've had officers that work part time, um, and we've been actually able to hire. The last two we've hired have had experience in some way, shape, or form, and been able to go through like an accelerated field training pro, uh, program. But in this case, uh, the officers that are coming out, with the exception of, of one of them who has, has dispatch experience, which would definitely give her a leg up, you know, in the use of computers and, and some of the protocols on the radio and whatnot. Um, but we're looking at probably mid September before they uh, before they're online on their own. Uh, but just getting getting the three back from the military is certainly going to, is certainly going to make me feel a lot better and make, make the men and women that work there feel a lot better. Number one, that they're back, and number two, that they're back in the fold, and you know, we'll, we'll go from there. Sure. Okay. Right. Thank you. Okay. Chief. Thanks, Chief. All right. Thank you. Transfers. Uh, as you know, Mr. Chairman, the. Uh, in May or June, the board and the finance committee can look to transfer money from in between accounts to take care of deficits. This is the uh, plans as of this date, the 20th. It could change, but right now uh, we are able to cover the deficits uh, from uh, various departments uh, using the reserve fund and a couple of departments that has not expended all of their funds. We will be looking in May and June to have the board approved and forward to the FinCom that, that solution. Mm -hmm. Questions, gentlemen? None. All right. Motion to place on file. So move. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Motion carries. All right. Uh, next item right of first refusal for the parcel. Uh, this was in, um, in chapter. In the board of the. January 26, 2023, this office, along with your office, received a letter of purchase and sales agreement from Robin Ellen Hardy, 1443 Main Street, in regard to right of first refusal on map 3, lots 14 and 15, was filed with the Bristol County Registry of Deeds and Plan Book 2385, page 312. Please turn your recommendation to this office. Please return your recommendation to this office. If you have any questions and concerns, this was sent to the Assessor, CONCOM, Planning Commission. The Board of Assessors recommends by a vote of two to four two zero to forego the right of first option. It looks like the 
as the planning board. Board. They're doing the same, basically, right? Okay, they're they're waiving their right of first refusal. Mm -hmm. And Cone referred it to us. Right. Okay. So it looks like the three other boards have decided to uh, take a pass on that. So it's up to uh, this board to decide what we want to do. <coughs> I will say it's unfortunate that it took this long to get to the board of selectmen um, for a meeting. Const um, CPC's already met. Um, it is a nice sized piece of land for a very cheap dollar amount. So again, extremely unfortunate that this is getting to our desk so late. Um, I don't think we have time to go forward, but I would have been uh, very interested in looking at this and putting it under the umbrella of the town of Akushnet for open space. But I don't believe that we have time to, uh, I don't know if we did it, you know, just double ways to fund it for cash. Just take a little bit from somewhere else but again this has been lingering around for quite some time and it should have um, been some discussion with maps so we could see the parcel of land on this particular property but it is it is a good chunk of land for a very cheap dollar amount so I think it's foolish that we wouldn't try to act on it and I don't see any explanation on why the other boards decided to forego and what rationale was put behind it but um, when I look at a large parcel of land like this for $56,000, I think it would have been a hell of a deal for the taxpayers and residents of a cushion to acquire this piece of land and put it into our um, preservation of open space. All right. Uh, what's the pleasure of the board? I mean, the more open space, the better, if I ask. And I didn't really look to get a chance to dive into the map either. So, uh, Mr. Gasper, how big is this? I believe it's 50 something acres, the last, the first glimpse I got at it. Does this have access right on Main Street? It's 51 acres. 51. And that's the problem. We got paperwork and it's not detailed enough. You should have a map outlining the parcel of the property. Um, again, it's been sitting out there for almost 60 days, and it should have been something that was taken up right away. Is there something we can make a motion to continue on further review? Mr. Fellows has got a question, Mr. Yes, Chairman. I have. A, I, I might have an answer why conservation decided we didn't think it was a good purchase for the town. That land is actually not accessible. It's surrounded by the reservoirs. Somebody's interested in buying it, though, isn't it? And somebody else has already been buying up the little parcels until I made a comment the last go around when that little that this family was breaking it's, off it's the right little parcel. The of the reservoir. Mm. I get it. So what do we want to do? Is this something we can hold off on, or are we on a deadline of this, Mr. Kelly? <coughs> so that's what we're going to do, is it right? 120. Okay. Uh, so what's the motion? Idea? I'd like to look at this map a little bit better and start digging in because this name's coming up a lot here, and I just want to make sure that we're doing what's in a, the town's best interest to not end up with. It was received on the 26th okay. of January. So can we make a motion to continue this discussion upon more information for the board of selectmen? Sure. There's, there's the hang-up, and I appreciate that, Mr. Hinckley, but I, I believe the hang-up is, is we need to set for the warrant for town meeting, right? And funding to purchase this land has to go to town meeting. So we late, know we have some flexibility yeah. on a date, but it would have to occur this week. Okay. Well, if, if we were going to fund it with CPC, then you would have to have CPC vote on it yep. and go through the politics of all of that. Um, if we fund it via free cash, we don't have to go through any of that. The politics of CPC, and we could purchase, you know, find fifty-six thousand dollars from free cash instead of stuffing stabilization budgets and things of the like. We have that option to do it that way as still well. Still have to be done by this week, though, correct? We could still we could do something. I don't think, you know, we get a lot to talk about warrant budgets in the thing. We have the moderator here. We right. get through as much as we can of this right. agenda, but. Whatever we're going to do with the warrant, we'll see what happens with that in the budget, right? So, <coughs> if 
if it's on the lawn as a uh, free cash article, it could be, it would pass town meeting on the 22nd of May. I believe the 120 day notice is just to let them know that the town wants um, it. Yep. Right, correct. And then you've got to go through the AG, so. For purchase in the land? Well, it'll be, if it's a separate article, right. free cash article, you could add it to the free cash. Mm -hmm. So we'll just hold off on, can we hold off on this vote? We're done doing the warrant in the budget because we have a lot of discussion there that we have and who knows if we're finishing this meeting today we're already an hour into it and we were trying to clean up I understand that but the biggest important thing that we're doing is that warrant and budget all right all right so let's just put this off motion to hold, motion to hold. second all in favor Aye. Aye. Make it quick. I touched upon it earlier. Lake Street committee met last week. Um, essentially, kind of a walkthrough just for the general public. We're going to. It's going to be a rolling project. Phase one really is to uh, what we're doing now is the guardrails, safety improvements, um, putting some walkways, defining the the boat and the kayak ramps, um, trying to make some headway in the parking lot. Um, but it seems no matter what we do there, that continues to be an issue with, you know, um, when we put gravel, people do donuts, spin around, there's ruts. Um, that said, you know, we're clearing out some walking paths. Um, there was some discussion about, uh, you know, uh, the kids' area, uh, planting, really greening it up. More grass uh, is better. And uh, so that's where things are, gentlemen. We'll keep you uh, posted on the progress, but so far, uh, so good. Um, next item, Mr. DeBarros. And I'm sorry to ha have you sit through this whole thing, but uh, I have no big deal. You get to see how uh, town government operates, I guess, right? So, <laughs> yeah. All right, if you want to just grab the podium, I know you uh, um, spoke can I initially. Connect to the screen. Uh, Nick. Uh, Nick. Yeah. I yeah, I pretty speak. much put everything on video, so I don't have to do no talking. Right. <laughs> I know you spoke to uh, Mr. Hinckley initially, and I spoke with you with Bob. If you want to sure. MC uh, this portion of the meeting. Yeah. I would never take your last cough drop. I got bags on my home. The more cough drops I eat, the less candy I eat when I go back upstairs. Oh, I'm going to break with this. property on Hathaway Road. This majority knows they've been having a flooding issue and all kinds of other issues. That is a lot larger than just my area that I feel is strongly needs to be addressed. So um, after a long night and a long morning I put this small little video together and uh, I want to just let that do most of the speaking. It says most of what I have to say. I'll try not to bore you.
explanation on this one. That's where the water is overflowing. And over here is where it's supposed to be going through a concrete cover that's just completely overgrown. As you can see, there's trees, everything growing, and now it's just overflowing that way. from the beginning everything from like scouts pond back I had a lot more but I was having trouble trying to get it all put together I went from not being busy to being slammed and then my I had my two-year-old daughter all night yesterday she just kept hitting buttons I'm like no oh, don't touch it <laughs> but yeah so this is uh that's Tilly and then there's a lot of water backed up in that shrubbery that you can't see I was trying to get like mainly the main spots that show the 
problem with the other surrounding uh, areas. So all that's supposed to be caught into a catchment and then it's all supposed to be coming out. If you can see uh, wherever that dirt road is to the left of that there in the power lines is supposed to be a discharge. If you look at your maps that I gave you, it's marked with red, red dot. <coughs> that's just pretty much a good glimpse of what is going on down there. That not just uh, mine, you know. You guys have any questions, uh, Mr. Chairman? Yeah, if I may, I went. I went by Eric's property on Friday night to take a look, and we went trudging through the woods, and it wasn't all that wet Thursday and Friday. And I walked through quite a decent amount of mud, and I can see his concern. There's a lot of. I mean, he does have a lower property, but water's not going to where it's supposed to, and I can stand by that. And also stand by the fact that I got to meet his two-year-old daughter, and uh, she was just trying to help you. I can guarantee. You. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's a, a, a little firecracker. And she went <laughs> walking with us too, but it's definitely you, you can tell where water's coming through stone walls, where it's not supposed to, and it just I think it's it's worth a an investigation to see if this is indeed improper drainage that we can fix, and if it's a matter of just cleaning up some brush around a culvert. It might be an easy solution that we could at least attempt. I, I had the same, you know, I took a tour of the property as well. And I'm not an expert on runoff, and you know, but I do think it warrants taking a look. It's not just your property, it's other people's who are being impacted, and probably, you know, for years people have said, well, that's just the way it is, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's obviously. Well, there has been other people that have made note of it, but nobody's really right. gone to the extent that yeah. I have, you know. I'm Eric's father. I yeah. live at 21 Rotary also. I mean, at the end where his children, the water coming through and where it ends, it's ended right in my backyard. Yeah. I've been there for almost 30 years and I've never seen it to an extent it's been over the last five. A lot of it has to do with the house that was built right at the end of that lot. You know, that he was allowed to fill it in after we were all told, oh no, you can't build nothing there bigger than what a trailer was that was there. Yeah. Now we got a whole big old house. Everything's filled in. So that does have something to do with it, but that, there's nothing we can do about that now. But now it's filling in. I'm losing more and more of my backyard right. every year because it floods, freezes. There goes every bit of the grass I have here. Right. Yeah. I understand that. You know, personally, I'm. Not alone. Yeah. My neighbor, it's 17 in Lane Way. He loses over half his backyard. It's flooded all winter long. Yeah. Was it's not right. Was that since that? Yes. House was expanded yep. They used to run through there and then run yeah. down to the river by the power lines. It doesn't go nowhere now. It goes there and that's where it stops. Mm -hmm. The gentleman did put in a pipe to divert the water, which um, what is going on at the beginning of the video, like I showed you with the Scouts Pond issue, it just this, spread out. it's not, it's supposed to be draining a lot lower than what it is because the outlet is just so clogged and so unmaintained and at this point to get back there and to do something is going to be a project all in itself um, but at the end of the day I think like I posted in there we really have to look at Scouts Pond and if we're going to keep building which we inevitably are um, and all these things are going to get drained into there. We have to address the situation of that pond either has to like get dredged out and make the pond a little better to retain more water. Um, and on the other hand, right now the outlet's only like 11 inch concrete outlet. Like it has to be much bigger. Um, all that happens is just, you get one stick in front of it, that's over. It's just everything else just collects and collects and collects, and now the whole thing will close throughout the hole. Right now, so like I said, mainly I just wanted to show that some people think I'm just being a fuss because my land's getting dredged out. In fact, you didn't see my land at all. <laughs> I had pictures of buoys going down my driveway because of the water coming down, and then um, in that map that I showed you, it. Uh, if you look. At Hathaway Road, 
And there's a pink, well, it looks pink on this, so I must have been running out of ink. But the blue line goes right through my lot, and that's right at the corner of Elaine Way there. And I'll point it out to you guys. So, yeah, right there, that blue line that goes right through. Um, the problem I had with this map is that it wasn't, if you look at the ledger, there's no um, ledger for a blue line. Um, but after talking with a few other people that use GSR a lot, um, it's the map's not incorrect as some people were telling me. It's just that the map is incomplete, which um, from what I understood, it was like over two and a half years ago this was put up when Mary Lee was trying to get us in compliance with the MS4 stormwater law or permit <coughs> and in that permit it states that we have to have one of these maps up and I think it was like one of those just push this through push this through even though it's not done so we don't get fined even though it's not completely finished um, and that blue line is uh, when I showed you the pictures of the wooded area but that's exactly where it's coming from so there's more investigating to do over there as in um, I I haven't really had time to door knock and say, hey, can I go dig up in the yard <laughs> and look for a culvert coming out? Um, it's just a lot. And then I was hoping maybe we could do another continuance for another time to really ass uh, assess the um, Hathaway Road itself. Um, like uh, the gentleman that was, my father was just talking about that built in the back, um, in a con con meeting back a few years ago, they allowed him to put that pipe in because it's straight sewer water. Uh, a lot of people's septics are out of uh, date and stuff, and all this storm water that's coming through our properties, it stinks. It's horrible. Like, it's it's more than just a storm water problem. It's coming into, like, health hazards and stuff. I have uh, photos that I can get into at another time. Like I said, I didn't have a, a bunch of time to get all this stuff put together. Like, I got 4,000 and something video of pictures and videos put together. Um, all the swells all down Hathaway Road have been neglected. Um, the way a swell works, it's supposed to use the grass to filtration, filter all these contaminants and everything out. And at this time, there's been no maintenance, so it's all just briars, trees, leaves, which does not filter out the contaminants of the stormwater and other things that happen from runoff of the road. And now, on top of that, we're running all this off into wetlands too and by law it's supposed to be taking that water before it gets to a wetland it's supposed to be filtrated through a swell there's catch basins that have filtration systems and there's all kinds of other things that are involved too that are not being done this is what happens when you have overdevelopment of your community right i mean everybody wants um you know revenue yeah um and build 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 because it gives the town money, but the impacts that sometimes that development has on, you know, folks that have been living in these conditions for yeah, we, we don't, we decades, see the world, um, you see the net result, the right? So you have a solar field that was put up in wetlands yeah. um, off Wing Lane. Yes, down here. I'm sure that yeah. that that's contributed to some of the the sogginess problem because I know exactly what you're talking about. And, I, and it goes back to a thing of business too. Everybody, you just brought up. Sorry for cutting you off, but. Like, yeah, everybody wants the revenue, but what's the big thing about business? You gotta spend money to make money. So that means along with letting everybody build these houses and condo, hey, everything's great, I'm all about it, let's get the money in. But that means sometimes we gotta bite the bullet and say, hey, we gotta pay some big money where we're at right now to go into Cushman Pond, dredge it out, and make it compatible to hold this much storm. Well, that, that and when you do new development, I mean, we've had a stormwater bylaw since 2007, I believe it was a nine, seven? No, 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 no. Um, 2007, well, I, criti I, I criticized the previous um, conservation agent a few years back because I know that we never issued a stormwater permit for anybody, right? Mm -hmm. But yet we've seen all this development. And then what happens is, is when you don't have people that are developing their property comply with stormwater, this is what occurs, my friend, is it falls back on all of us yeah. taxpayers to go out and funding to clean up this flooding problem, right? I mean, MS4 <coughs> is a pain in the butt. I get it. A lot of developers don't like it because it's an added cost. But guess what? Tough. 
it's part of doing business, right? And it, sh and it should be burdened by the developer, not by all of us taxpayers. And then on some other hands too, though, we don't, as I see exactly where you're coming from, but sometimes the everyday person doesn't have to overdevelop their property to take care of stormwater that is from the town. Like, we can go back to that map again. Like I get it. Of, some of this stuff is, is not your problem. It's not the person before you. It's the person before you and before you and before you. I get you. it. Like, I went back and traced records all the way down to Wing Lane was established uh, Town Road in 1962, 1965, and 1967. I was trying to find town records to find out if we could go back and just have a guesstimate of what the layout of the land was, what they had planned to do with the stormwater. Like, I know it didn't have no stormwater plants, but if you pay attention, it, it will still have elevations. So that would be able to tell us, like, oh, okay, that's why that... They were planning on pushing it that way because under my understanding everything was pushed all the way through the back but on the other hand with the new ms boy you can't run public stormwater through a private piece of property without the consent of the owners of the property and there's none of that either it's it's, it's a tough one so i feel like mainly that whole piece that i showed you we need to divert into the stormwater system of the streets and then the other part is to fix the problem at Scouts Pond because we are still growing. How many houses do we got going up over on, uh, what is it, Margaret Street in there? You know, he's what, he's putting uh, 12 in there? 15 or so, 15. yeah. 15. And all that, that's when I kind of panned up. I wasn't really trying to pan up to look at him. I was panning up to try to catch my direction of where I was flying. But all that, that's where that water comes in. That's all coming from that way too, so that's more coming in um what's the other one it stinks being in the low yeah. in a low area you know you think it's it's not know. even just that it's just it's never yeah, buy it a house at the bottom of the hill yeah but whether wants to pay the whether wants to pay the benefit you know we ain't paying for it i mean it's just so you know, so right. look here's the thing and he's here now and i know as of late conservation agent has kind of been you know got a target but one of the things i know pat's trying to do is clean up and you know sometimes the enforcement is uncomfortable when you've had decades and decades of oh, yeah, right. nothing happening oh, and all of a sudden you know lack of a better term there's a new sheriff in town trying to make sure that things moving forward are done properly and it's a little bit of a shock to the system and a shock to, to people like what i got to be held accountable but i think you know you bringing this to our attention as a board we should put together, you know, try to put together a plan to address this area because it's not just you; it's this, it's a neighborhood in general. Yeah, yeah. it's a large, uh, that's a big know, piece of it. Pat, how you feel, or, or Mr. Phil, how you feel about that? But it's wa warranted, right? I, I'd like to tell you how yeah, I feel, please. So, <coughs> like Mr. Gaspar said, it wasn't enforced since 2007 when the bylaw was put in place. And um, when I was hired to be the assistant health agent, it was recognized that the conservation agent was kind of not getting it done. And I was asked to go into conservation <clears throat> and take over stormwater. And after getting into the bylaws, we find out that no permits were ever issued. We filed false information with EPA that we issued permits and did enforcement and all these things It was never done. So this is a culture shock from from Hades for, for everybody that you show up and say, if you want to put up a stone wall longer than 12 feet, you need a stormwater permit. And they don't want to do it. And I've got a commission right now that's starting to waive and being asked to waive stormwater requirements. And I'm trying to tell them, you're seeing it now. We've got uh, a new term, atmospheric rivers, um, going on in the, in the West Coast. We're having three and four inch rainstorms here in a Kushnet. This is the new normal. Um, and as far as, as far as getting this taken care of, you can't just put a bigger pipe there and let a whole bunch of water run downstream and flood somebody out four miles away. Um, I, I had a project where we were ordered by the Board of Health to rip out a beaver dam. And you could have generated electricity from the water that came out of that beaver dam. And we got a call from the town of Tewksbury, four towns away, that we were, we were causing flooding in that town. That's a very delicate, Oh, right. Right. Yeah. Yes. yes. You can't dredge it. You need a place to bring the dredge material. It would take you two to four years to get a permit. 
It'll cost you millions of dollars to get rid of the dredge material. Just, just not a practical thing. Um, there's a lot of development going on in town. A lot of people got building permits without stormwater permits. And, and we're kind of behind the eight ball on that. So I, I don't see it getting any better until everybody complies with the stormwater permit. Every person that, that needs a stormwater permit gets it. Not that um, the stormwater authority has the ability to just say, I oh, forget it, you can't afford it. And that's, that's happened recently. You can't afford it, you don't have to do it. It has to stop. Um, and, and Mr. DeBarros is 75% is there, but he does have a property that historically has been wet. But Wing Lane should have never been permitted by the Conservation Commission. Priority habitat, all the wetland groundwater was at 18 inches of the surface. And the building inspector gave a permit before it went through stormwater. He came to me and asked me to get involved, and I said, I'm just a health agent. I, I, I'm, I'm not going to get involved in the stormwater. But when I did take over, we brought in a, a peer review engineer. They went in, they did infiltration tests, like a perk test, but an infiltration test. And um, we gave them the best possible situation we could, other than to tell them to take their $5 million worth of equipment out of town. Because it really should have never been there, but it got done. So that is a, a, a continuing problem. Uh, the, the solar fields at 88 Wing Lane. Um, they got permitted, they shouldn't have been, but they're there. And um, maybe you go back to 88 Wing Lane and say, we want you to come up with some, some mediation for this. You, know, you caused the problem, you filled wetlands, it's been documented. Mm -hmm. They we were completely we were, caused it because there's been, I, like I said, I've been there 30 years and there's been flooding for over the last five. The solar fire over there on, I guess it's the east side, mm -hmm. which is all the downhill, yeah. they just put that over there last year. So it isn't for them because they cleared that out. There used to be a horse pasture. There was horses over in there. But they filled wetlands there. They tore out the tree. They didn't fill them in. They no, tore they the filled, trees they, out. They, no, they I was there. They tore them out. I'm not going to They filled wetlands there. I mean, so. it's still, it all runs downhill, and it isn't, yeah. but that's all just this year, right? That isn't so. five years ago. Stone yeah, yeah, it added to it. It added to the problem, but that isn't what the whole problem is. It isn't just the solar fields. It added, the solar power yeah. added to the problem. Added, right? Mr. DeBarris, I don't think Pat's trying to say that's the problem. I'm think, you know, I'm I think what he's trying to say is that it's a more accessible area for us to attack first. Well, I really think, you know, the yeah. thing, I think the thing to attack is to go out and identify these storm catchers and make sure they're clean. At least get them cleared out and let's see which ones are working and which ones aren't. Yep. Well, the problem is out of sight, out of mind, right? I mean, well, it, it, it is. is. And he's in the woods um, and, you know, the you records. Walk right down Hathaway Road, there's three storm catchers within a lane way and his property mm -hmm. that are so blocked up and overgrown, you can't even see the pipe. I was just and they just redid them, redid that little what years ago. But the bigger not question even. is, not is even. the pond on town land? Oh, I heard that something about new benefit you're trying to bring up. If it's if it's not on town land, it's, you know, there's well, not much we have to, do. to be reliable to control our stormwater. It doesn't. If, if it specifically says an MS four. It doesn't matter if it's on uh, private property or if it's on public property. You have to maintain it. It says it we, doesn't we, say anything about it. We have, a, we have an obligation. I'm sure we have an obligation. <coughs> yeah, we have to maintain it. With it. I mean, I just drove down, you know, not to spearhead this over to Lake Street, but yesterday we didn't get much rain and I drove down Lake Street and it's got nothing to do with where we're working right now, doing the sidewalks and the guardrails and stuff. It's up further heading towards Main Street if you're coming from Middle Road. And I was kind of blown away at the puddling that's further up. And it's like, you know, all we need to do is dig out a little bit of the road and let some water drain into the ponds and we wouldn't have all this. And one of the puddles that I hit, kind of, I drive with my dog all the time in the truck. It freaked him out so bad he jumped in the back seat and stood there for the rest of the ride because he was like, what the hell was that? And I, it was unexpected. So, well, I mean, we got this flooding issues. We have a lot of country drainage is what we call yeah, it. It is. Um, yeah. In town. Um, but there's a lot of areas where we have stormwater basins, and we go out. I know Dan's got DPW that goes out. I think it's the, the Vigent company that goes around and cleans out stormwater basins. Maybe we have to head to Hathaway Road and take a look at stormwater basins over there and see if there's anything blocking them up um, and, and get, get to the bottom of it all. But so we actually get a report from DPW on how many miles of roads they sweep, how many catch basins they clean, how many tons of material every year for the MS4 report. Correct. So I'll, I'll get you guys that information and, 
and send that out to you. No. They haven't been on a lean way lately. Other than so, when they so wait. here's the thing. If, if it's Spongy. an issue of, you know, horsepower and people, I mean, as we're talking about budgets and whether we're spending 56 grand for open space or things of that nature, if we've got to bring in contract with a third party separate from the DPW to just focus on catch basins and cleaning that up and routine maintenance, then that's, that's, a, you know, that's money well spent. Um, and it sounds like that's something we probably got to think long and hard about. We got, we got two articles we'll be discussing hopefully really soon. Um, getting into the warrant, um, but there's one for $25,000 for MS4 permit for the town side of it and another $50,000 for engineering services um, for the and town's MS4. So the town's spending $75,000 and that's just the start yeah. of where the that's town needs triple. to go. That's triple what the town has allocated for stormwater over the last three years. So the, the town's getting serious about it. Yeah. Mr. Kelly, you work for another town where well, they spent $400,000 to do this. So he's, he's got that dialed in. 50,000 up front. I asked the engineer today for a scope of work for the 50,000 um, so that that work could start on July 1st when the when the new budget starts. Do, uh, do, do we have a stormwater committee? No, well, that was another thing that right. I was That's I brought it to your out. attention. I it's understand, Pat, and I appreciate all the hard work you're doing, but just seeing from being stuck in the middle and um, I'm a recovering addict, I obsess about things, man. I was up for days the stuff that we have to do to comply is going to be astronomical. And I don't think that it is. Mr. Pat is going to be able to do it all himself. I think we as a town might want to come together and try to come up with a stormwater a department with a board um, away from the DPW because DPW is already slammed with what he has already. Um, you know, maybe just a unit that's directly for trying to speed up the process of getting everybody in cahoots. Um, Mr. Pat's been working on that article uh, very hard, which I respect, but just because we get that article done doesn't mean that EPA won't come down and do searches and give us other fines. Um, I had conversations with people on the internet telling me, hey, go to EPA, blah, blah, blah. And I was trying to explain to them, like, this is not just an I problem. This is a town problem. Eric, I'm not trying to... We don't need to go to the EPA because if it doesn't get straightened out soon, they're going to come to us. That's right. what I'm getting at. That's yeah. what I'm getting at. Well, that's so, what I'm getting at that for two years. So, I know. I'm on your side. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's just tough. And, like, I know you say that you can't dredge help, but maybe it was, like, what, two years ago? They went back into the power lines in the back and they did dredge out um, a significant area where the discharge came out uh, right before where it turns into the stream of my property, because that was always a stream, and they made a nice uh, swell out of it. Well, going back to MS4, that thing's never supposed to get over 50% full. This year, it was 100% full. That's why all this water got backed up, because now the pipe that we put through that gentleman's backyard was submerged underwater. But then again, so maybe we have to reach out to New Bedford. If New Bedford owns Cushman Pond, we gotta reach out to them too, no matter what. Something has to be done over there. Absolutely. Gentlemen, thank you. In the, thank you, Eric. Uh, in the interest of time, can we put this on the agenda for the next meeting? I think we're meeting when? When are we meeting again? Uh, the May 9th and the 16th. Right, so for well, May if we have a problem with the 16th there, start jumping things, I won't be in town. Right. The only reason, Kevin, the only reason why we put the 16th in is it's after the election, and you know typically we meet and mm -hmm. organize, reorganize, and quite frankly, I suggest we meet that day, although I'd like to win, but out of respect for if yep. Mr. Chu I does happen it. to win, you can get acclimated and get moving. Um, but anyway, that said, we'll meet, okay, whatever that is, we'll, yeah. you guys can figure it out. So you're gonna, is this something that I'm going to be involved with? You want me to get the other footage put together? So what I was going to suggest is that on May 9th, we can bring this back up for discussion on May 9th, and what I, was, what I would ask my colleagues to do is maybe we can do some research about what a stormwater committee would look like or what an effort would look like to try and address this. Maybe one of the board members would step up and spearhead this. And I think you're right, because we're maxed out. Like, yeah. you know, Pat can't do it himself. The CONCOM can't do it himself. We all can't do it ourselves. You know, today we're talking about safety and pedestrian stuff. I'm, I'm thrilled that a committee is going to form there to handle that. So I think it's worth 
discussion and you know we'll keep the um, if people have suggestions on how to handle this what other towns have done yep. um, and then we can at least keep this conversation going for the next meeting I don't want to just do it now yeah, shelf yeah. it and then not talk about it and whatever so we'll keep this you know like stormwater plan or something or other um, and we'll bring it back up on the agenda on the night and like I said, I'm, I'm more than welcome I'm willing to uh, put some of my own time in yep. and like I said I got tons of stuff and it just with the technology today, Good. like I could just throw throwing up in the air for hours and have fun. Okay. Have the little one. Hey, look at that! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, thank don't you. Don't want to push, push the buttons on the expensive drones. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was an expensive drone. I know it's if you to take time out of your work day to do this, we really appreciate it. So thank you very much. And no, I appreciate it too. Um, I'll, I'll touch base you. with you this week too. We'll, we'll put together Before a plan to to launch so this way we can figure yeah, out what we're just going to do. Uh, yeah, yeah. Right, take yeah maybe we can get that involved too. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Right. Uh, we'll take a brief uh, recess for five minutes. minutes. Uh, the number 10 I asked to be put over. Yep, uh, so we're going to move on from the planning, uh, planning board solar review. So before we get into the line, we're just going to take a brief five-minute recess. Is there a motion to go into recess? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Motion carries. All right. So uh, is there a motion to reconvene the meeting? So, so moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Motion carries. That was my right In stereo. All right. Uh, we're going to do the school solo. We're going to take that out of order. Uh, Thank you, Chairman Wilner, for select. Uh, I'm going to keep this pretty quick for you guys. Um, long story short, um, we've been talking about a potential school project on the uh, campus of Cushman Public Schools for a few meetings now. Um, last meeting, we failed to um, vote to authorize the town administrator to um, have the ability to enter into a or sign a letter of intent, which essentially, uh, you know, is just a good faith agreement, which at this point will allow um, Select Energy to file an interconnection application with Eversource um, to kind of see what's going on underground and what kind of things need to be done. This takes, this is the longest lead time of the entire project um, that we could potentially enter into. Um, so signing this letter of intent does that and then it also locks in um, all the incentives um, that we discussed at our last Board of Select meeting. Um, you know, as its incentives get eaten up, um, they get less and less beneficial for us. So by signing the letter of intent now, we can capitalize on what incentives are there um, at this time, and then uh, you know we can move forward working with select on a potential project. Again, this doesn't enter us legally into any commitment to a project or anything like that, but just the good faith that we'll work together to see if we can figure something out that works for both right. parties. Um, so that that is my request: is to authorize the town administrator to enter into a. Uh, sign a letter of intent on behalf of uh, the town and public schools. Gentlemen, so uh, president of the, of the board. This is this is what we talked about before for that canopy thing. Correct. But it doesn't it doesn't commit us to anything. Nothing. It's just for the town administrator to you know get more information on it. The only the only thing that I would um, add to that conversation, I don't think that we discussed that day was um, usually when solar companies come in, you know, with private. Um, well, um, landowners and things of the like they do um, a lease agreement mm -hmm. and if they're going to install whatever megawatt solar array um, sh should we be getting something for that uh, set per se lease agreement instead of just some little credit that's going to show up show up show up in over 25 years maybe save maybe save a million dollars but I do know some people that have gotten involved in solar and that application and agreement can change um, which is kind of scary. I don't know if many people know about that, um, but it can change and their savings can diminish um, with those agreements. So all I'm asking is if that's something that we can do, we can talk to and perhaps bring in some revenue for a lease agreement because they are using our land. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the other thing is we've got to make sure of the decommissioning. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yep. So, yeah, I mean, again, we'll talk about it further down the line. There will be a lease agreement, but as far as I understand, the revenue for leasing our land is built into our price that we eventually lock ourselves into for electricity. So the benefit is on, you know, the side where we have a locked in electrical kilowatt price at a very low rate compared to what the market price would be. But once we get there, we'll go through, we'll We'll discuss all that. We'll cover it all. There'll be a full contract agreement if we get that far. Is there a motion to uh, authorize the town administrator to uh, uh, 
speak with uh, the name of the company, Select Energy? Execute a uh, letter of intent. Yeah. So moved. Second. All in favor? All right. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank Thanks, you. Patrick. All right, just for the purpose of uh, not being all over the place, the OPEB uh, Trust Fund. Motion to the table. Motion to the table. Uh, okay. This was just uh, the information that right. Mr. Gaspar requested last uh, time was put in. And okay. it's and it's that fat and I got all this other stuff that we have to do. So, so I appreciate it, but it's not today. <laughs> no, it was just to provide you. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Yep. Just want right. to get into the, the Warren. That that's what matters. We're on. All right. Getting through all this. Here we go. The warrant for town meeting. There's, uh, in effect, four files in front of you. One is the uh, verbiage in front of the articles. Uh, that is technically not, it's technically part of the warrant, but it's not an article for any appropriation. This is informational, uh, how informational people do work. So on several pages. Yep. This is great, Mr. Kelly. I know last year you did this, and the time and energy that you have put into this is pretty incredible. I um, can't say that was done in the past. Uh, so thank you um, mm -hmm. for attention to uh, your craft and, and detail. So once we look through it and we approve it, we'll get it posted on the on the web page and yeah, people people want to do a pre-read. I've gone um, through this whole document over the weekend with the budgets to um, kind of help out Mr. Kelly and back check, you know, everything that's going on. And you know, it's, I just I do have some questions as we go along. And I want to go if you want to go page by page. They're not numbered. That's the unfortunate part about it. Um, there's, there's certain sections, I guess, the table where it talks, and it's unfortunate we're not. You know, the fiscal year general government aid in school, chapter 70 school aid. And, you know, it just makes a certain comment. And I noticed that Mr. Kelly did have that. Um, the only exception to this patent is the governor's increase to chapter 70 school aid in fiscal year 2024, which is a huge <coughs> increase from what we've always seen. I mean, we've seen 71, 36, 0, 38 all the way back to 2019 and this year the schools have received seven hundred and one thousand one hundred and eight dollars the question that i have mr kelly on the bottom one it says total tax levy um 21 690 estimated state aid net on your net number it says and it's been referenced several times in this document eight million six hundred and sixty six thousand nine hundred and fifty eight when I look at that net number, am I adding the general government aid and Chapter 78? Yes. So the math don't come out. That's, that's well, you're adding that, on but it's net. Um, so, okay. Uh, so I added the first one, fiscal year 2024 20, at the top, general government aid, and I added to the Chapter 70, which is 7170330 and I come up with 8,961,828, and this one showing estimated state aid is 8,667. So it's over three, like almost a $300,000 difference. So I just want to know where I went wrong. Well, we take the uh, offsets for the assessments. It's basically, uh, when you look at the revenue estimates, mm -hmm. Okay, we, I can get. I just want to make sure that there's, there's nothing, and the numbers are correct. Yeah, it's. Uh, uh, we ran. I, I ran the numbers by Todd, and I. When you say <coughs> net, the state gives you money, but then the state also takes away money. For uh, the various assessments. And let me go into the other piles to just tell you what some of those are.
County. Can I speak, Mr. Chairman, while he's doing that? Yeah, just the, 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 some of the general comments that are made on the general government accounts um, it makes, and I think it leads people to believe certain things and certain people. It just says, in addition, there is also an increase in the planning department's salary account, which indicates the conversion of the planning's planner's position to full-time. Um, the planner's position has been full-time for quite some time. So I just don't want to falsely lead people to believe that we're going from a part-time planner to a full-time planner. And that's basically what that line says. And I don't like to mislead anybody. I'll, I'll change that. So, so it's going to mark your face. And uh, the, I can discuss that other language change with Mr. Kelly offline, which so does not need to be good now. Just. Uh, Again, it's just this. And it is under, I uh, you know it stinks without the capital CPC budget. We're going to get to that. But the municipal budget summary says the fiscal year 24 budget is a balanced budget. Um, again, I will make this comment as I did last year. I don't believe we're <laughs> offering a balanced budget without ratifying all of our town contracts. Yeah, the regional, is it? The regional sheet. Yeah. yeah, it's in there. We, we, can, we can move on, Jamie. Yeah. I, don't, I just mentioned that number because, I, I, you know, the accuracy of the numbers matter. Yep. Um, and I'm obviously a numbers guy, and I reviewed this document um, pretty much 100%. Um, I can discuss some of the little things, changes that need to be corrected later on offline. It's nothing that we need to be discussing now. Yeah, I would say if, if any board member has provisions submitted to Jamie and then so long as you report them if they prove out then just report it back to the board. Yeah that, uh, that document is the board's uh, message to town meeting. It's not part of the warrant. Right. Per se. Just want to make sure the message is accurate, that's all. Yeah. I don't see so it I'm here. <laughs> all right, let's get into the articles. All right, the articles before you are a result of town council getting back to us this morning. Mr. Chairman. Yes. I apologize, Mr. Kelly. Yep. So, right, you're on, it says um, annual town meeting. I'm working off the document that was given to Ms. Mr. Kelly PDF on Friday afternoon, just so everybody knows. I know it has been a new document. I'll never look at a new document when it's dropped on my desk when it's 70 pages long. So I'm working off my document from Friday from Mr. Yeah. Kelly. Yep, I'm not looking at that because all my notes are here and I'm gonna go back and forth in five minutes before a meeting. So I just wanna, the sheet before uh, annual town meeting, it says F fiscal year 2024 revenue estimates. And I do have a question on that before we jump to the next page, which would be annual town meeting with all the articles. And I noticed that there's a number change on the recap sheet, and it looks like the number's not matching the water department budget. So I know we have the assistant town accountant here. Nick, um, really good at what he does. So I'm looking at this number to 1888, and I can't see all the rest of the numbers because Mr. Kelly printed that one so small. But from the previous one that was dated on March 8th, um, it went Do you from. You know what he's looking at? Yes. Okay. Charges and for it. services and water. This page. Oh, okay. Right, but he's not looking at that. That's the issue. Yeah, I am. Same thing. Just a recap sheet. That's all this is. Uh, and I'm looking at the change from Mr. Kelly had given us in previous meetings. He, he keeps updating the recap sheet, which is very important because um, it has everything to do with everything else that we're doing. And I'm looking at the change that was done and it looks like the 60,000, there's a 60,753 dollar difference, but the number that's backed out is the reserve number, line number 578000 in the budget. And I wrote here, it doesn't match the budget, the difference of $60,000, which is what we carry in the reserve line item, five number 578000. 
So there has been a change to the number, and all I'm saying is if you're carrying it on the recap sheet, yeah. um, which is important because it goes to the Department of Revenue, I want to make sure that our numbers are correct because we've had <coughs> problems in the past with recap sheets being submitted in error. In fact, we've done things on town meeting and we've missed the water department's budget in whole several years back. So, so char charges for services for the water dash water is what you're looking at. And yes, sir. Look, in the you're budget, one eight 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 one nine one. That is that is correct. And if you look at the the Board of Public Works budget, that's that number doesn't match, and that's what I'm trying to raise a flag on before we start getting too deep. So. That was the number that came out of accounting uh, it, two it, weeks ago. They're leaving. Yeah. It, it's it's the number has been increased from the prior number, which is a little bit weird. But you're leaving out the sixty thousand dollars in the reserve. When you subtract the two numbers from the budget number from this number on the recap sheet, it's subtracting out the sixty grand in the reserve that we always carry. So it says water principal line number five seven eight eight eight. In the water, total water budget is one million nine forty-eight. Nick, you have it because I can't see yeah. Jamie's little numbers. It's one million nine forty-eight. One ninety-one. One ninety-one. Correct. So I'm raising the question because I think it's an important raise, and I think Todd, if Nick, Nick Todd would have that. Hmm. I'm just concerned having that on the recap sheet because it's not the total cumulative budget. It's missing the $60,000, I already did all the math, from the reserve. And I don't know if it's because that reserve is already always appropriated and hasn't been touched. So it doesn't need to reflect every year is the only, yeah, thing, yeah. I, it's it's the only thing I can think of. Because it's... Um, I want to make sure we're Yeah, right. the water reserve is funded through undesignated. So that's why it wouldn't be... I know, I just want, when numbers don't match, yeah. flags go up with me, mm -hmm. um, and I don't want to be under-appropriated by $60,000, especially not in my water account. Yeah. Oh. So we're just making sure that we back check that number, and the only, you know, I, I think it's because, I think Mr. Hassett will say it's because the 60 grand has already been appropriated, it's never been touched, you're not looking to grab 60 again from the reserves. So we keep that out, but it's still there. That's the only thing that makes sense to me. We back it out. Uh, let's just double check. Yeah. Please, thank you. And that's that. And uh, basically at the bottom of that sheet, um, again, because of the increase of $701,000 in Chapter 78 to the schools and on top of the other 350 that they're taking, um, the town will be spending one million four hundred and forty one thousand eight hundred and eighty six dollars year over year which is a very large amount of money year over year and unprecedented actually and that that shows the uh, increase of the seven hundred approximately seven hundred thousand and it includes the extra chapter 70, 70, 70 the seven hundred and one. So we're spending one million four hundred and forty-one and change over last year's budget, which is a boatload of money. You said that right. And that's that's the end of the recap sheet. Sheet. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want to make sure the numbers are correct. Okay. I've been through some things with DOR before. <coughs> I don't want to get into those anymore. You know, this is a small point but the way I see these Delta figures shouldn't that be opposite shouldn't we be comparing FY 24 to FY 23 to reflect that number rather than 23 to 24 that's the increase from 23 to 24 yeah I understand okay that's how much more you're spending yeah I understand that I just I've always felt it should say FY24 versus 23, but as long as we know what it means. So I did all of that, this taken on the legal levy limit and then the um, operational tax levy. So, and the numbers, the last number's already plugged in there for you. Yeah, the, the serious concern uh, down the road is 
uh, if you're looking at local revenues that are uh, fairly uh, consistent but are not growing and you're looking at expenses that are ballooning ballooning what i said ballooning oh, your yeah. expenses are ballooning I thought you said ballooning no <laughs> <laughs> so we uh to the articles Let's keep diving into the articles all right mr uh, kelly first three articles and, uh, there is uh it's a stylistic change that town council uh, he's looking to say take any other action there on or in relation there to instead of uh, take any other action there on uh, I would suggest uh, he also in Article 3 is saying otherwise provide for a transfer of a total sum of the so the first three articles are housekeeping articles article w two will not be moved but we put it in in case uh, we have to make any transfers from available sums uh, for this year's accounts and yes there is a space issue there keep in mind we've did, we went we've gone through these already uh, town council's recommended in article 4 in the consent agenda to uh, just leave uh, the appropriate from the pay access cable for fiscal 24 expenses as follows and remove a number of the other line which i believe it's all stylistic the uh or in relation there too carries on throughout till article 11 it's all uh, pretty much lawyers doing whereas is instead of wherefores. Yeah. Article 12 is somewhat rewritten by town council. It accomplishes the same thing. Uh, I would uh, suggest to the board we should adopt town councils. Uh, wording I've talked to him we started talking very early this morning and he says for clarity purposes in the future it makes sense to have it this way now what it really does is it uh, makes sure that the soil conservation board uh, be authorized to expend funds solely for programs related to the fees that will be collected for such purposes and it inserts a table that shows uh, how the uh, fees will be generated and what it can be expended on and the fiscal year that it was created and, so and authorizes subsequent fiscal year so you can carry it year to year this is obviously we're requesting this this is new correct this is all new language yep for what are, what are you on right now the soil <coughs> conservation bylaw number 12. Yeah. number 12. Yeah. 12. this sets up the stabilization fund this kevin that's oh the 53 yeah i got it in here all right i was yeah, going to say it jumped 53 year and a half one. yeah fees pjk i wrote yeah sorry Uh, article 13 through 19 are stabilization funds. 
The first one is the Health Insurance Stabilization Fund. I'd like to discuss that with the article further on about the Mass Strategic Health Group. So if we can put a hold on that. You'll understand why I'm conflating the two. On the uh, compensated absences, Town Council had three other options for the wording. When we talked, uh, he and I explained to him the purposes. He said the original wording, other than a uh, Uh, then removing accrued liabilities for compensated absences in, for payment in future fiscal years of said accrued liabilities just be changed to future liabilities since it's a fund that's already been created. Mm -hmm. uh, Stormwater. Stormwater, he, uh, rather than just say reserve fund, he wants to say stormwater MS4 stabilization fund. And uh, he changed uh, the say further to transfer from free cash instead of by transferring from free cash. And then that other word or in relation there too. Or in relation there too was added to the general stabilization, it was added to the OPEB, it was added to capital expense stabilization. And under 19, he... Can I hold Article 16? It's 150 grand you're proposing going to general stabilization? Yes. And we talked about the land purchase? Uh, so that's the biggest nut that you're putting in money. If you want to talk about that right now, I can. I did some figures while we were talking earlier. No, I just we we didn't we didn't know where the land was, whether we, we yeah, even have the appetite. But, but, uh, okay. Uh, you could authorize the purchase of the land in the. Uh, capital in a capital article and f fund it from raise and appropriate or uh, transfer uh, from available funds. Okay, raise and appropriate scares me because I feel that's taxation to buy land. We have all this free cash. That's why I talked about free cash being an yep. option. So, so we got to... No, I meant all three. You could put <coughs> that, all three options. And yep. there's, uh, there's available uh, money in uh, revenue and there's uh, Right now, the seventeen thousand in free cash. Okay, we can discuss that later. But I so know. it's however the board wants to do it. We can move things around. But if you want to take fifty thousand out of there, that gives you a cushion too. So it would be a hundred thousand rather than a hundred and fifty. Yeah, that's why I'm just, I, I just, I feel Six better about it. We can, we can yeah, just okay. hold it and, and then we'll figure it out once we figure out offline. I think you can have discussions with the board, right? And to manipulate. You just have to, when we finish this, vote to instruct me to have an article for that. To, uh, up to uh, uh, fund the potential purchase of the land. Okay, we'll figure that out later. I'm sorry to stop you. I just have to stop you before all the money. Well, we ain't made motions yet, but that's why I figured I'd hold that one. The, uh, Article 19, uh, he didn't really, town council uh, added minor language to the article. However, he rewrote the reason for it quite considerably. <laughs> which is uh, 
I think we should just go with his language. That's a special ed accounts. Yep. Did we already we already have that too? Because I find that we've we already have some of these accounts, right? But it's but we re it's to authorize the tuition money to go into the special ed. I know I thought we did a special ed account in previous years. So. Yeah, you've got one. Okay. But this is to authorize that particular money to go in. Okay, boss. Capital budget. Uh, he removed the amount. So it's raise and appropriate transfer from uh, free cash, a sum or sums of money, including in each case all incidental, incidental and related expenses to provide that each project or acquisition listed below shall be considered a special appropriation and may only be expended in the amount for the purposes listed. And it's the uh, amounts for the uh, technology budget and under police it's the police server and uh, backup equipment the, the the grand stream phone equipment and devices is that school no, that's for us. So it's yeah, the other uh, other buildings that will need phones in. Okay. And then, the, so that total should remain from free cash of two fifty four nine sixty seven, even though town council's saying take out the top line number. That'll be run right into the motion. It, it will. Uh, all of these i all of these items will be read for a total thereof. Mm hmm. Yep. I understand what he's doing is so that you can't get the 254 and spend it on one of the items instead of all of the items. So he, in his motion, he's breaking that out to be specific to that's exactly what you have to spend for that piece of equipment. End of story. He's breaking it out as here's the equipment, here's the amounts, with the bottom line being that limit mm -hmm. versus putting the bottom line into the article itself. It's uh, when you, can, uh, the moderator will be reading the projects. Yeah, and he specifically says can only be expended in the amount and for the express purpose listed. So That's you correct. can't transfer funds between line items. No. Yeah. The school can't use money that is appropriated for the town and the reverse. Yeah. 21. 21, he put some language in case the, uh, s uh, the specific fire truck is no longer available. <coughs> that one, uh, uh, an appropriate one that meets the town's needs, that's within the same price frame. Mm. So that's the, for the people that are watching at home, that's the tanker truck at fire station number two in the north end of town. <coughs> um, if we need to put it all on display at town meeting, I think we could, but if it'll, if it'll make it there, um, it's desperately needed for our fire department to supply them with the apparatus that's necessary for our fire department and uh, call firefighters to do their job. So. Um, I have expressed interest in that for some years, but it's kind of nice. We have we will be funding that also from free cash, Mr. Kelly. Yeah. So, kudos to um, to the board um, and our finance team and Mr. Kelly on that because in the past we just got done retiring out some debt. I think last year on a fire apparatus that we went out and did a borrowing and created a debt exclusion, uh, which is higher taxes on the people. And here. The the board finance team has been uh, proactive in taking a look at that and utilizing our free cash for these large purchases. So, kudos to the team. 
All right, the next article is the CPC article. Uh, the board hasn't voted on their recommendations. I'd like to, uh, project by project. Neither is the Finance Committee. Finance Committee is uh, voting on the projects prior to town meeting. I would ask that the board consider this as project by project. So you want to do that right now? I can um, make a motion, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Is that what he's looking for? He's yes. looking for a motion on each individual expenditure? Yes. Mr. Chairman, if you mind. Sure. Yep. And these are all been approved by CPC? Yes. I'll make a motion. Except for the Perry Hill Church repairs flooring. Which table? Yeah, which table? table. I make a motion to approve Recreation Parks Department Survey Plans Engineering Pope Park um, Improvements Open Space Category in the amount of ten thousand dollars. Second, second. I'll make a motion to. I'm going to vote on it. All in favor? Aye. I make a motion to approve the Historical Commission's request for Long Plain Museum Fence Repair Installation Historic Category in the amount of seven thousand six hundred and forty dollars. Second. All those in favor? Aye. We're Aye. not doing. You skipping over the flagpole? No. That's, That's next. next. Okay. Historic. I got it. Okay. Historic commission request flagpole Perry Hill School installation on the historical in the amount of two hundred and sixty nine dollars. Uh, Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And the historic commission. Parting ways, building sign, repair, replace, in the amount of fourteen hundred dollars. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. They had a request the historic commission for church repairs and flooring that was tabled by CPC. It cannot be taken up if it's tabled by CPC. Buzzards Bay Coalition, a Kushnet Forest Conservation Project, undesignated taken from the undesignated fund balance in the amount of $85,000 and that was discussed in table the last town meeting and I know that there was some conversation Mr. Chairman yeah. you brought it up yeah. um, but I don't know where Coalition Buzzards Bay is they haven't come in front of us to discuss that proposal so well, gentlemen uh, yeah. it sounds good <coughs> they had planned to come in at the last meeting um, but Mr. Rasmussen contacted me as we were going into the meeting um, and communicate asked me to communicate to the board we didn't, we didn't invite him them here today but communicated to the board that um, they're going to be acquiring an additional property that would grant um, access to uh, to all of these properties mr. Dakin you were on the phone you heard that report and I reported that back to us uh, to the board last time um, so I took that as sufficient information um, that I was passing along on behalf of the coalition if I yeah I like it I just wish mr. Rasmussen was had here to make that commitment to the board right. and to the townspeople um, and not be you well, know I don't want to penalize them for that because that's my error because based on our last conversation I didn't see the need to have them come in it had we requested them to come in they absolutely would have uh, come in to do that but I took that as uh, I, I can tell you that there's 137 acres that are in a cushion it and it's going to be accessible from Long Plain Road in Mattapoise the hundred and something acres is only accessible for seven acre total acres hmm so does that include the land that they just purchased adjacent to this parcel that they're requesting? Because that was the whole stipulation when I put this on hold in the fall meeting, was because the Kushnet didn't have direct access to it. At the last CPC meeting, Buzz's Bay Coalition acquired property adjacent to it to give direct to Kushnet access. I, as far as I could tell, looking at maps, I looked at it home, it's accessible. Yep. When's your final date about recommendations? Because they're on our agenda Wednesday night. Today. Right. Today. I mean, we could we oh, approve it, and then if we don't feel comfortable, yeah. you can table it. You know, Mr. Chairman, if I may, uh, I heard that there's uh, 
they purchased an extra 100 acres and there's going to be three points of access. I haven't seen it. I don't know exactly, personally, where the points of access are. Can we, can we approve this pending? Yeah. You can approve it and then Table it, at town it still <laughs> has to be voted at town okay. meeting. Would you like us to ask for that information Wednesday night, though? Yes, yeah. please. So we can amend our, 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 we'll take care of that. Yeah, I think um, it's it's a good project, and I think it's a good idea, and I've had a lot of people reach out and support. I would just like everybody to have exactly what they're looking at in front of them so they know what they're getting. And It's extremely beneficial, yep. right? Mr. Wona touched on it the last meeting, and I said game changer was my exact words, right? If they, and he mentioned three access points. Yep. The problem is, is it, it, you should be here when you have articles. So present I, your Kevin, article. Kevin, I'll take responsibility I for gotta, that. I got it. I got it. And present it. And I think it goes a long way to town meeting and shortens the lifespan at town meeting over an article. If we, <coughs> if we do things the right way, put it up there. We, we show it to the people. You get buy-in. They're like, cool, that's awesome. Like I said, I mean, if you get, if you add another 100 acres to this, for the same 85,000 yeah. bucks. And there's no other future cost to that 100 acres from the town of Akushnan, or maybe very little extra cost, and you have three access points, that's a game changer, right? We'll put them on the agenda for the next meeting. Uh, so, yeah, approve it conditionally. If we want to table it, we can table right. it. So, the, the vote? This is already on our agenda. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. So, the vote? We approve, approve the Buzzards Bay expenditure of $85,000 with conditions, of, you know, conditionally or whatever, Mr. Warner said. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, the next article is the uh, MS4 engineering article. Uh, town council uh, was looking at some language, just minor. When I had the, dis you folks had the discussion, I would suggest you change it to, we'll vote to raise an appropriate comma, transfer from free cash comma, or otherwise provide for a transfer from available funds, a sum of $50,000. And that covers you all the, all the different ways you need to. And I don't see it changing the intent, but it gives you some flexibility. It's similar to some of the articles wording in the, the beginning of the warrant. Scott Storm Warner. That's MS4 engineering. Yeah, we just talked about that tonight. I mean, this is what we, the resources that we're looking for. Of course, for. absolutely. Yeah. Oh, it's definitely needed. I mean, we need yeah, to. Yeah, so I just. Hopefully, we don't get to the point where we're spending, like Millbury did, $400,000 a year, but we get our act together. Um, you know, with everybody being on board with stormwater once and for all, instead of the swords coming out. Yeah. Will be a much better community in the, in the long run. And on the next meeting or the meeting after that, I have Buzzards Bay NEC, which is not Buzzards Bay Coalition, is coming in on a grant, a uh, hundred percent grant for some stormwater uh, mitigation down by the Akushnet River that we can apply for. But uh, the wording I've just given you, if I can change that article to that wording, that gives you flexibility on how you want to fund that and uh, gives you an opportunity to uh, make sure it's done. Oh, these articles are all free cash, right? Free cash or transfer from available funds. If you have available funds somewhere else, you can transfer it from that. Mm. Okay. Now, it would be nice to see between April and June 30th where there might be some available. <laughs> well, too late for now because town meeting is May 23rd or whatever, right? So. No, but I mean, if. Uh, well, I just want, I'm, I'm just trying to keep track of the free cash and make sure that we're doing free cash and, you know, keeping away from taxation yep. as much as possible. I think we've done a good job with budgets. 
as far as we go this side yes article 24 is a thousand dollars between the board of selectmen and the historical commission to fund repair and maintenance of historical signs uh, i've got the riverwalk park sign in the garage in four pieces Mm -hmm. I've got parting ways sign falling apart. Mm -hmm. I've got the COA sign like sawdust. We and I've I think you need more than a thousand dollars then. <laughs> I, well, we've also got the parting way sign is in the CPC funds. Yeah. Uh, I've talked to uh, Mr. Polanski, and we're going to see what can be done as far as either restoration or if we have to have new signs made. But they're all falling apart at the same time. <laughs> and some of them... 25. It's made from the same tree. Yeah. I don't think they were uh, the right lumber. Article 25 is uh, the article for borrowing, it's a two-thirds vote. It's just so we can get on the list to replace the ambulance. We're not intending to borrow in future years, but to, it's a 24 to 32 month order period. And so this is for us to get in the queue. Mm -hmm. There's no, it's just, it's just language. Um, the chief had, had said it's just language to secure that the company would need certain language showing that the, it would be secured by town meeting and they would put us on the queue. But without this, the company would be like, nah, we're not just yeah. going by a verbal from the chief. Yeah. Right. So. No handshake deals for 600 grand. Yeah. No. And uh, we can't even consider if we ever wanted to borrow, which this I think is better for free cash next year or the year after, but what you would have to have a VIN number and you don't, you're not even close to getting the video. Yeah. Right? No. Jamie, why is this uh, <coughs> two-thirds vote if we borrow? Because of the amount? Because it's a Two-thirds vote is because of the borrowing. Be because of the amount of borrowing? Because you're borrowing. No. Just borrow. because you're borrowing. Yeah. It's a debt exclusion. Okay. But theoretically, if the board's got its act together and the town's got its act together, as Mr. Kelly just alluded to, free cash is the option over multiple years, right? So the board could do something if that VIN number was available, just say next year, 300, the following year, 310, and you cover the expense, and in, in the next year's article would just sit parked, right? Like we have other articles yeah. sitting and parked, and then the following year, yeah. and you put the final you touch on it. And then you can rescind this article. Yes. Exactly. Can you make that noise again? Very good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the next article is the article that would uh, authorize the Board of Selectmen to enter into whatever deal that Solec Energy is going to propose to, uh, to the school. It's just an authorization article. Mm -hmm. And the next article is the operating budget. And I think the two issues that you know as changes, one is the soil board money, and the second is the uh, partially fund the overtime deficit for the police department. And that it shows the difference in the uh, 60,000 between the Board of Selectmen recommendation and FinCom. FinCom recommended the 60,000 additional funds into the police overtime account. 
Yeah, but I spoke on that in the original meeting, right? I said you can't change salaries without affecting overtime, right? So you're saying that FinCom voted an additional 60. For the overtime mm -hmm. budget. Yeah, that's fine. I know I had a conversation about regular permanent salaries, but you know we'll have to figure that funding, I guess. That's the pleasure of the board. I feel more comfortable always, even though you're behind, allocating funds to it so you're not lagging and then you have that big effect in the upcoming year um, when things are ratified. But, you know, we're in a pretty good place, I feel, with the budget, so so be it. Article 28 is... Um, oh, oh, hold on here, Chief. Are we still looking at budgets? Yeah. Okay. Well, hold on a minute, man. So oh, I didn't hear. No, I'm. So, I, I, no, I didn't know if you were just blowing through the do da 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 da. But, but we got so you identified so well, we did money with that so we could do fees, engineering, and all that stuff. Police department, the ups, and the other one, the library. That one originally the board uh, approved going. To full time. Yeah, so under culture and recreation, the library budget 6610. Um, the budget that we we originally looked at um, didn't take into the account that Dina was leaving. And I think that we've come to a consensus um, offline um, with the trust people that called and spoke, and we set a different parameter. And if that parameter is set, we for the advertising of 65 to 75, you have a $5,000 shortfall to the budget. So all I'm making is a suggestion. <coughs> you said that there's a little bit, the 17 grand or whatever it is, Mr. Kelly, that's still available? Uh, that's free cash, but I have uh, uh, another amount, more considerably more than that in the uh, revenue. So it, I think that we need to stay true to ourselves and, and raise that by the additional five thousand dollars that we went out to advertise. So, uh, uh, two hundred thirty-seven thousand seven fourteen for salary. Yeah, yeah, and then it would obviously change the bottom line to two ninety-nine two seventy-two. If my math's correct, Nick, you looking at library? Yeah. So right now, budget is sixty-nine thousand five hundred three. So you want to just. So that one would just go to even 75 in the budget, the detailed budget. Okay. Just because that's the range that they advertise for. And if, mm -hmm. if they come in and they hire above the 70, you don't have proper funding. Yeah, so it'll increase $5,497. Yeah, whatever the change is that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So you must be talking from where it is now, 69 and high change? Yep. Yeah. So, yep, you just go to 75 and leave it there, right? And yep. then we, they have that flexibility, but then this sheet, for town meeting changes, as Mr. Two. Kelly alluded to, 237, 714, mm -hmm. and then the total would change to 299, 272. And culture would change to. That's right, you three, broke it up. 389. The, mm -hmm. the bottom line would be 34, 671, 650. And all the other budgets look good. The only thing that I need, and I spoke with Mr. Kelly's, I need a new pension budget and a new insurance budget. I think he gave us all of that stuff over there as well. Right? So we just make that one change <coughs> from all to library. Yep. Yep. I, well, I'll make that a motion. Second. Favor. Aye. Aye. Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight is golf. Is good to go. Twenty-nine is sewer. So twenty-nine sewer. I have a note, um, and I don't know if it's because of Nick's calculation of fifty-two point two to fifty-two even. But well, on the salaries in the budget that we received, um, total salaries were 80619 so we're off by $619 in 
in the sewer, that's an enterprise fund. Doesn't affect taxation. But if you look at the operational budget for sewer, salaries are 80619 We're off by $619. So I don't know if that was that because of the years, not 52 points. I think that was the reclass from the clerk, the senior clerk. But it takes away money, not ads. That's short 619 what you just said would add to the cost. So, so all we need to do is check that number with Todd as well. If the, you know. What was the number? One more time. That you had. The number in the budget that we previously looked at and preliminary approved was the salaries. Um, the overall salary number is 80619 And this pay, this article says 80 even. So it's off oh, by $619. Oh. Um, I don't know that reason why, but I back checked everything to the budgets that we originally went through. And, and that would uh, change the bottom line to a million seventy one thousand six nine four. Rick. Okay. <coughs> as long as there isn't rationale to go to eighty and not the eighty six nineteen, that's all I'm asking. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, no, it should be the it should be the eighty 619 should be 8,729 because of the 110 from the reclass. So, yep, so there you go. Yeah, extra 110. From the yeah. reclass. <coughs> so, so, so that's going to be 29. So, 110. Uh, the bottom line, yeah, the bottom line is fine. 804. Article 30, uh, I agree with town council. Uh, he uh, proposed language that simplify and take out most of this because it's in statute. It's just to see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate or transfer from free cash the sum of 20000 to fund the Elvis Community Service Program in accordance with General Law 59. Section 5K, and to provide that the hourly wage to be paid for services under this program is applicable hourly minimum wage or take any other action thereof or in relation thereto. Uh, the reason for simplifying this is he said that last year was the first year we funded it. And now that we've got it in the second year, he doesn't think it needs to be uh, uh, described <laughs> like it was in the years <coughs> past. I had to I paraphrased it last year because it was so lengthy. And yeah. Yeah. Are we all set, Mr. Gasper? Yeah, I'm not paying attention anymore. I'm <laughs> looking at the budget numbers, but... Okay. Yeah. Article 30... It's still in the ones, it's fine. Article 31 is the Youth Employment Service Program, similar to this. Although he said we leave the language in in this one because it's the first time we're doing it. And so it hasn't changed at all. Article 32, uh, to see if the town will vote to transfer from free cash or otherwise provide for a payment of the sum of $100,000, getting uh, what he scratched out, uh, pay for costs associated with joining the health insurance purchasing group Mass Strategic Health Group Trust Fund, or take any other action there too. I would suggest that we move this article and not the health insurance stabilization article. This article enables the town to join the health group to pay into the health group's trust fund 
and to substantially decrease our cost from the Harvard community cost of 30% increase. And at your next meeting and the meeting afterwards, I would like to bring Master Teacher Kelsbrook in to not only describe the fact that you're not getting anything less or any more deductions or anything like that, plan design change is, stays the same, but because of their con concierge health design, you get a lot more services, including dental, vision, et cetera. Okay. So the employees in the long run get more. Uh, Article 33 is uh, to fund the Cushnet Firefighter Local Collective Bargaining Agreement. Uh, Darren has changed the wording to say to fund the cost items contained for the first two years of a three-year contract. Okay. And uh, Article 34 is the uh, we're going to take the personality out as far as any name there and just go with the called fire deputy chief description for the uh, special home rule petition okay. <coughs> article 35 is the old colony regional vote tech feasibility study article. Article 36 is the elderly exemption on the Board of Assessors is asking that you minimally increase it. Uh, the last time you increased it was 2019. Article 37 is uh, from the town clerk and she's requesting uh, that you amend the town bylaw and to hold the town elections on the fourth Tuesday in April or any such other time that shall be determined by a vote of the town. Vote. I mean, I know that it says in the charter now first Monday in April, but we've been ignoring that for quite a while to get us closer to the budget. And it was voted on at you know whatever and a couple of years. COVID it was a couple of years ago, it. and there was Jim Cabral and I think the Roche did that right, and they moved it. But the board of selectmen always have the authority, don't we, to change to call the election? Yeah, but you know I. I I just want to say um, to Pam, thanks. Um, I think this is, I was going to have a conversation with her um, about town elections being on Saturdays because I don't think we're getting the turnout and I think they moved it for the turnout reason, right? And I don't think we're getting turnout on Saturday elections. Um, so a lot of people are aggravated about voting on Saturdays. So I was going to have a conversation with her. So I want to thank the town clerk, Pam Bobani, for doing this and actually my my plan was to go to a Tuesday just like state and federal elections are um, everybody's familiar with Tuesday voting so it makes perfect sense so thanks Pam all right the next article is the uh, on recommendation of town council to clean up some inconsistencies in the soil conservation bylaw. Part of the inconsistencies are the fact that at some point you refer to the Soil Conservation Board, at some point you refer to the Board of Selectmen, board of selectmen and you need to be consistent. So there are those changes <coughs> and there has been some changes to the verbiage of fees and there's also a waiver provision that he worked on. Um, because as we said in the last public hearing, there is no waiver of provision. Most bylaws have a waiver of provision. So, and I, and I just want on that waiver piece before like people get to put their own. I mean, what we're doing is creating a process for a waiver to be considered, not flat out providing a waiver. 
So, you know, whether any business, as far as I'm concerned, should have the ability to apply for a waiver for anything that they're doing. But that doesn't mean it's going to happen. It doesn't mean it's a guarantee. But it's providing a process. And I, you know, in this here, it says in the proposal, the, bo the board may approve permits that do not comply with the provisions of any section. I would say the board may consider. Um, and then the language underneath it speaks to that. And, you know, it does say if the board, if the above required to met the board in its sole discretion, I don't love that language either. I would strike that and say if the board requirements are met, the board may vote to approve permits. Um, I just think words matter, and this feels a little too like it projects as if aggressive, oh, aggressive and that a, a waiver is a done deal. And I think we should be talking about creating a process, but not by any means uh, as being a done deal. So if when I got to the next one and staying on the soil conservation, because we've talked a little bit, it, on those, the uh, stormwater bylaw, I think consistency matters. If you look at section five waivers, um, it's got some language there as well. So, I mean, the stormwater authority or its authorized agent may waive strict compliance with any requirement of this bylaw <coughs> or rules and regulations promulgated here on the where such action is allowed by federal, state, and local statutes or regulations of MS4 permit, obviously we strike that, and in the public interest, and not consistent with the purpose of the intent of this bylaw, and then B, any person seeking a waiver must submit a written waiver, which it as kind of says, request, such a request shall be accompanied by an explanation or documentation supporting the waiver request and demonstrating the strict application of the bylaw does not further the purpose or objectives of this bylaw. And then C, if in the opinion of the stormwater authority or its authorized agent, additional time or information is required for review of the waiver request, the stormwater authority may continue to a hearing to a date certain announced at the meeting in the event the applicant objects to a continuance or fails to provide requested information and the waiver request shall be denied. So, you know, I, I don't, I don't know why this waiver has waiver language. Other bylaws have waiver language. Recreating the mousetrap for a soil conservation bylaw, different verbiage and waivers. I think as a municipality, we should be consistent. Yep. As long as the process is created, and if we have one already in place, then use that. I mean, there's one right here that makes, I think, pretty decent sense. When I was reading through the stormwater bylaw, I'm like, well, this is some waiver talk right there. So, so adopt it, uh, adopt this language into that section of the uh, soil conservation yes. bylaw. Soil conservation changing uh, any uh, designation to MS4 permit. To yeah, I mean, you got to talk it over with council, but say, hey, look, you know, this is this is this language here. The template's there. But uh, but as far as printing the warrant, if I get uh, language, give. Town Council, this language right. he comes back with an adaption. Is that what you want yes. to put into the warrant? Yeah, I think we, you know, again, it, it, you know, we, we, we sit around and, and boards and committees sit around. It's like, no, that's not true. We got this waiver right and you guys don't. And I think just when it comes to waivers for, for certain things, it's, we should be very consistent and not be, you know, moving off the mark. A waiver provision is a waiver provision. So just run it, copy that send it to Jeff, yeah. see what he thinks about that, if it's going to do everything that he's proposed in the, the other one, and he says, yeah, we can go with that same stuff. Okay, be done with it. And, and then we, we, at least we have, we're starting to develop some consistency to our bylaws, right? And, and uh, but uh, the other uh, changes recommended by town council are fine. I'm, I'm fine with it, yep. Yeah. All right. It's just, it's basically capitals and bylaw and word verbiage and things and the like and yep. add in where inspector was in certain things he mentions inspector and board and other places he just left it for inspector and I just put slash board so that is the same language again 
just consistency throughout the bylaw, trying to be as consistent as we can. Um, well, I do think there is there is a significant change proposed, which is the ability to collect and impose fees. Um, yeah, on above, the uh, above and beyond what we're currently doing yeah. now, because we're clearly leaving money on the table, and to have the ability to do that, I think is uh, is really important. Yep. And, um, I think that provision is added. That's a significant change. If anything, probably the most important change uh, in this bylaw. So. All right, I'll talk to Ted Council on that. And the next to the last article is the stormwater bylaw. I think uh, we've got people who could talk about it because I. Sure. Child bond. What you pay me for? <coughs> Do you want to say anything about it? <coughs> so two things. Um, it's, it's imperative to, that the town passes this revised stormwater bylaw. Um, but there's a couple of deficiencies here that I just want to bring up. Um, one is, again, we didn't do any public outreach. And this was a big issue at the last town meeting. So I contacted uh, Conoco and I for consultants and said, you know, to just move forward without the public input and, and outreach. And he said, no. So I asked him to send me an email. Um, I brought that email over here to Mr. Uh, Gaspar. But another major concern that I have is I recently received an email from Christopher Hawkins from PJ Keating. And um, he wanted a copy of the, of the stormwater bylaw. He had watched a meeting where he had heard something about it. It's in a draft form. It, it hasn't been to everybody. I wasn't going to send out a draft. Um, by law, I directed them to public records access officer to the town clerk. I haven't heard any more, but I just have a feeling based on past practices that if this goes to town meeting, we're going to hear from Keating that there was no public um, input and that they didn't get the bylaw to look at it. And you may wind up with a very crowded town meeting again. So I, I also asked Kevin McHugh from Conoco. If this didn't pass a town meeting, what would be the, the problem for the town? And his feeling is there, there wouldn't be any issue um, that Conoco would write a letter on behalf of the town to EPA explaining um, the public input and the fact that it didn't pass at the last town meeting but for that very reason, and that the town has um, tripled the amount of money they're putting in the MS4 and they've gotten serious about you know, getting this done. And we'll have the bylaw passed by football town meeting. And we'll go through the public. So you're suggesting that we table this? Or, or don't even include it? I, I, would, I would not include okay. it. Is there a motion we'll to strike? Trouble. Is there a motion to strike? So it, it, there is, on the regulations, some pretty strong language in here. And again, um, and then section seven, enforcement. I mean, it's it, there's some strong language in here. And I get it. it there's going to be strong language inside of this. but. Um, we just one thing we though. just don't do what we're supposed to do and I've been the biggest critic of it is for crying out loud it, 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 the regs call out from the state is do public outreach programs right there's supposed to be one done for residential and then one done for commercial industrial two totally separate meetings to hash out all the things that are the do's and don'ts and you're supposed to actually get public involvement and then design a bylaw around certain things that you can do and I'm just I don't understand why it's so difficult to say okay you know X Y and Z is a stormwater authority let's let's do a, a meeting and do a public outreach program and, and like I said two or three months ago I don't care if anybody shows up at least then we can say yes we did do it yes. right that's the important part of this is we can't say we did it when we didn't do it and we're going to look bad in the state's eyes and we're going to spend 75,000, 100,000, whatever it is, and we need to do it. Don't make no mistake about it, but shouldn't we, my problem is, is and I'll speak to, to my colleagues, is shouldn't we understand what this means? 
before we bring it to town meeting? Because I can tell you right now, I don't know what this means. I don't even I, think the commission understands what it means. I, I mean, they're volunteers. They have a lot of stuff going on. They struggled to, to get through this template. In the beginning, um, Commissioner Resendez was against having a consultant write this. He wanted the, the town to do it because he felt it was very restrictive. And um, in the end, they weren't abusing the template because a lot of this language is, is supplied by EPA and it's mandatory. And some of it may seem heavy, and, and that's because it probably comes from EPA, but it's mandatory. So it does. I mean, it is, it is some and of the language. I've identified some of the languages. Yeah, it's, it's, it's especially it can be, on the it can be brutal deal. Yes, but so. it'll, it'll be brutal if you don't do it. You know, I'm just, Mr. Chairman, if I may, where this is the last article on a 39 article uh, warrant, I would predict it will be three hours into the meeting, and if it's on the uh, on the warrant, it's going to get tabled from the floor already. Well, I've asked for guaranteed. a motion to strike it from the from the warrant. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Motion carries. Just Great. so the board knows, uh, staff was not involved with the drafting of this article. Okay. Well, I mean, it's not ready for prime time. Yeah. So can we make the effort? effort to to now that it's stricken, we just make the effort. Let's get some involvement so we can get it and, to town and get your MS4 consultant to come in and explain it on TV. That's right. Don't put it. You know, if it's if it's the conservation commission. You know, and they just kind of took over this stuff. It, we should have somebody come in to, to their meeting, an engineer, set it up at Council on Aging, right, the meeting, yeah. do the informational outreach things for residential, follow up with the commercial, industrial, put it behind us, that's said and done, and then we're ready to go. Yep. I and talked to Kathy about sending out some notices with the water bills. Yep. That's another form of public outreach. We want to do that when we know when we're doing public outreach when and not telling people, hey, in September we're going to be doing this because yeah. everybody's throwing that away. So, th so there is a second part to this where the, where the Stormwater Authority will then draft a regulation that goes along with the bylaw because there's not a lot of language in the bylaw. And um, for that, there's a lot of outreach for the, for the regulation. And that doesn't go to town meeting. That's passed at a simple meeting. And that needs a lot of public information. Vetting. That's where yes. you work with the public. Yes. Concerns by the public, yep. and they say, whoa, 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 and they can Because whoever shows up at that conservation meeting is going to vote in that regulation, and you're going to be living with that. Yeah. So it's very important to make sure people know what it is. Yes. Know what it's about, and more than three people show up. Four one is fair one. Yeah. All right. Anything else? Yeah. Uh, our next meeting? Uh, actually, we need now... Well, first of all, I approve all this, right? The board, so the board knows we're adding parting ways town office building slash town clerk's office to the various places where a copy, an attested copy, will be posted. Okay. At the request of the town clerk. Very good. What are we going to do about that subject parcel of land? Because this board would need to take a vote if we, if we want to do if, something like that. If you want... An article, you can approve an article on this warrant for uh, to raise and appropriate transfer from available funds or transfer from free cash the amount of 56,000, etc. For the uh, for the right of first refusal, yeah, for the right of first refusal purchase of this land. And I'll include it where the uh, we were going to put the uh, this article, article thirty nine. So we'd have to do it at the next meeting. No, no, you can instruct me to do it now and approve the warrant with that in it. Yep. And for the next meeting, we should at least discuss it. To have the home to have the property owner come in and explain what's going on over there, because I think just to look at the map. Yeah, but you, that doesn't mean the article has to no, be moved to town. No, we just meeting. talked about having Coalition for Buzzards Bay come in. Are they going to come in at the next meeting? I think we should have the property owner come in at the next meeting, which is prior to town meeting, to explain. I just have to have this printed yeah, and yeah, posted. Just, that's fine. Yep, but it's part of the public outreach process. Okay, yeah. Because so looking at a map. Take through. Tells um, one story and there may be some other. So, 
rationale behind it. Can I have a motion, yeah. please? I'll make that motion. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Motion Aye. carries. Now a motion to approve the, the warrant and execute the warrant, and I will get you the 14 signature, signature pages you need to do as of tomorrow when we put the changes okay. in. Is there a motion, motion to, to approve the warrant? And execute the and warrant. Execute the warrant. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Motion carries. One step closer to town meeting. I just want, Mr. Chairman, if I could, I just want to take an opportunity um, to reach out to Nick, Todd, our finance team, basically, Jamie, the town administrator, for the hard work and dedication to doing the, the warrant um, and the budget process um, and coming back after all that talk back and forth with the finance committee. I'm um, coming back with pretty much the same budgets that we originally looked at. Some very little fine tuning on the budgets, um, but great job to the finance team, um, Mr. Kelly, um, and, and most of, you know, I should say most importantly, but just as importantly, the finance committee for doing their, their job and the hard work that they put into the community and, and getting us where we're at. Um, unfortunately, again, I'm not happy about the Chapter 70 money, but a lot of money is being spent there, so with the schools, but. Um, from our perspective and, and to all our department heads and departments that you know took the advice from right out of the gate this is what we need from you no resistance and that's pretty much the budgets we stuck to is their plan. so um, coming in I, I, the way I see it the town side outside of the fixed cost we're pretty much level funded all of our departments I mean I know technology's got some increases in it but there was a forty four thousand dollars reshuffle that, that took up a lot of that percentage that's been shuffled there um, but all in all if you look at the dollars being spent our town departments are pretty much level funded um, and that's 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 saying a lot so I just want to thank the employees um, and everybody's hard work that was put into this um, well, hopefully next year we'll be able to I would like to more. add one name to uh that was Mr. Gasper. I couldn't have kept track of all this paperwork, kept track of all the appointments and everything without Tanya. As always. Sure. Yeah, great person, great employee. She uh, Thank you for mentioning kept, it, kept it on track. All right. All right. Is there a motion to adjourn? Um, did we say when our next meeting was? Because I know we were the ninth. ninth. That'll be good. The ninth we're good. It was down. Six. Yeah. We might have to use. Gasper, how about this? Is ninth is good? Got, hold on. But going to the next, as I discussed with Mr. Kelly on the phone, presumably you will be the next chair uh, after the election. So you can set up a date that works for you and report back to uh, Mr. Kelly. Are we good? All right. All right. Can I say one last thing? Yeah. I just want to thank Mr. Dakin for being so actively involved in this, being here almost as much as Jamie. Uh, <laughs> as the voice of the town at town meeting, no. I, I just want to say your enthusiasm and your attention to detail do not go unnoticed, and I appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Hinckley. But, uh, you know, I just observing other towns, Westport's on the verge of an override, the Haven's on the, on the cusp of an override. So, Everyone here in the town of Acosta, the board of selectmen, Jamie, finance people, department heads, school committee, and most importantly, the finance committee, who, who doesn't get paid a nickel and asks all the difficult questions. Uh, and you've all done a great job. It makes my job easy, too. Thank you. Absolutely. All right. Very good. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Aye.